Hey, welcome to Next Gen Cast. Today we're talking about the Metal Gear Solid Delta uh, trailer reveal. Um, you know, we're a little bit late to this one, but, uh, you know, the thing is we late. were busy all week. I mean, my brother and I were at a trade show and we couldn't really get together to film a podcast, but here we are like a little bit, you know, probably what, about seven days after the fact and, you know, just giving our opinions about it. So, you know. I mean, I'm excited about it. it. It was this trailer, you know, was basically exactly what I wanted from uh, Konami to release. And uh, you know, if you know, if you're familiar with our opinions about the whole Kojima uh, versus uh, Konami debacle, then you'll know that we're kind of like more on the side of Konami these days. But you know, uh, the style of this trailer was exactly what I was wanting. It was uh, very straightforward to the point. Very balls to the wall, obviously, with the action segments. Uh, I don't know. I just felt like it was exactly what we needed from this. Yeah, it just felt like there was no nonsense in the trailer. You know, yeah. just like it just got to the point. It kind of like it reminded me a little bit of Kojima's older style of tra trailer editing. Mm -hmm. Maybe not as stylistic, but just like showing you what, what, the, what the game has to offer, showing you gameplay, showing you cutscenes. I mean, it was yeah, edited. It was it was edited together nicely. Oh, yeah. you know, of course. I it mean, was I like, like I felt like it's it's a trailer that you can show anybody to get excited about the game. Yeah, yeah I was even yeah. showing it to my family. Uh, you know, yesterday when we got back, and I was like, yeah, check out. There's a new Metal Gear. I mean, my my obviously my parents don't know fucking jack shit about Metal Gear. Yeah, but like, you know, uh, my brother Joseph, he's played. Uh, I think he he beat four yeah he beat four. Beat, that was uh, the only one that he beat but okay, he's, yeah. he's, he's he's watched us play a lot of the metal gear games before yeah, he's kind Wait, of like the only game that he played and beat yeah holy shit yeah i know the fucking finale of the entire thing but yeah uh i thought you know at that point it was all just about like you know metal gear or ps3 yeah you, you know bought, you bought a ps3 at lunch you wanted a fucking next gen game to play and that was the first one that was like yeah. okay this is yeah. next gen is starting now you know so that's why he played that one um, he was pretty unfamiliar with the series before that, but yeah, he really enjoyed that game. And, you know, obviously my family knows how, you know, the thing is I've noticed about Metal Gear Solid three. I mean, I remember like maybe about five years ago, we just, we had just bought Metal Gear Solid three on the shield, the NVIDIA shield. Mm -hmm. And we had it uh, plugged into my parents' TV and we just threw it on and we were just playing it. And, and our whole family was just watching the game, you know, yeah. up until, you know, I think we stopped playing it like around the time, uh, at the end of the, the virtuous mission and, uh, they were all engaged in it. Like, well, his dad was, yeah. Yeah, dad and Joseph. I mean, yeah. maybe mom wasn't, but yeah, I mean, it's a it's a game that anybody can get into, you know, like most yeah. people, you know, well, so especially I, my dad, you know, he was, you know, he's a huge kind of military buff. He's a huge history buff. He's a huge like, you know, like aviation, aviation kind of, buff. Yeah. He's like really the into game, like, and the game takes place in like, you know, the during during the Cold War. Yeah, so the, it's like, the era that he grew up, yeah. you know, it was like literally, I mean, he was born in 56. So he uh, kind of like really related to a lot of that. I mean, he remembers JFK. He remembers you know, all that stuff, uh, you know, of course, you know, JFK was probably like, uh, he's probably seven whenever JFK died, but mm -hmm. you know, the game takes place later on in that decade. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, our dad is really familiar with that era, but I'm just saying like, even if you're not like, uh, you know, grew up in that year, but you know, just even for older people that, that kind of know the cold war, you know, and yeah. you know, just know what it's all about. It's, it's basically just, it's a very, cold war very, comic book, you yeah, know? Yeah. Very interesting. It's very and, kind uh, of like what happened like, behind the yeah. scenes type of situation and, and during the it Cold ties War. into like also like James Bond, you know, like espionage and mm -hmm. just like yeah, I mean you have the people gadgets, like that game for the like cool yeah. dialogue. Very rich in its style, very rich in its history, very rich in its storytelling overall, very rich in its gameplay. You know, it's like yeah, it's, it's, people it's, yeah, people like that game for the same reasons that they would like James Bond. You know, so yeah. it's like it's just very. It's a very popular game in the franchise. Obviously, obviously, like one of the most popular, if not the most popular. Um, but yeah, the trailer. We showed them the trailer. We showed our whole family the trailer, and they were all fucking like blown away by it. They were blown away by the graphics and you know the gameplay elements that they showed, and they were just you know my dad was making references to how it looked like Rambo and the with the hind D stuff, and you know a lot of people were just really interested in it. You know, yeah, just I, yeah. I, I just can't help but like notice how like whenever you're just like decimating like. Uh, a soldier with like a machine gun. Oh yeah, dude. I mean, the that's what I, that's, that's the thing. So like whenever Kojima like showed his death stranding trailer, he was showing these stupid fucking rope fucking guns and shit. Yeah. Or just like, uh, okay. He's like, he's like went on like a press campaign, just basically talking about how there was not going to be any violence in this game and how it was going to be like, you know, basically neutered. And I was like, yeah, dude, this is not what you're known for at all. Your best games I mean, I would, I would arguably say that Metal Gear Solid 3 was his, like, uh, at least as far as the fans' perception goes, that is his best game. Yeah. It, 
Yeah, you're literally machine gunning down people in that yeah, game. No, the thing is, they, made, they, they actually like, made it a point to show that tra in that, that in the trailer. And I noticed whenever I was watching a lot of those reaction videos from YouTubers, yeah, whenever that they shot, all, whenever that shot came up, whenever he's just gunning that guy down, they're like, "Oh shit!" And then yeah. like, yeah, uh, and then, so some guy shot. was some guy was even saying, "He's like, oh man, this is manly," you yeah. know, and just like fucking just people. People responded to it well, very you know, positively. It, we, I would say that the industry overall overall is kind of starved of that type of uh, freaking uh, game. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think in comparison uh, to you know, Death Stranding is like you have something that's like a really meaty and juicy, right? That you see like you know in, in Metal Gear Solid Delta, compared to like a more niche, like like you know vegetarian. Yeah, no, I was about to like, say it's this very beta kind of soy boy type <laughs> of thing, you know, where it's just like. <laughs> Somebody who's very effeminate would would probably latch onto that game a lot more than Metal Gear. So yeah, um, yeah. I just I just think that Metal Gear Solid Three overall just and even especially this trailer, it just kind of got to the point, showed you a fucking shitload of action, showed a lot of hand to hand CQC combat. Uh, you know, especially with Rocks the new launch, I'm actually yeah, excited about like learning like how all that works. The faces, CQC? yeah. I mean, the thing is, uh, the animation looks great. I mean, it looks like a huge upgrade from the actual original three. Um, you know, especially with the CQC, the graphics, I have no complaint with, no, I mean, other than the fact that there's like missing motion blur in some of this shots, yeah, which think, will be present you know, in the PC version that yeah. I'll be playing anyway. I'm yeah. Sure. I did notice that there was like most of the gameplay shots did not have motion blur. If, if, I would actually say that all of them, except for one, there was one shot in the trailer that like where snake Grozny was doing Grad. CQC in Grozny Grad in between two tanks, that shot had like a lot of motion blur. And I think that like, whenever you see that shot, it's like. It looks way more photorealistic because of the motion blur. Yeah, so yeah. I'm, I'm thinking that that motion blur is going to be, it'll definitely be in the cutscenes, but I think that it'll at least for sure be in the PC version of the game. Yeah, I think so. Mm. Yeah. If they already have it in the engine, then might as well just have an option. You know, most yeah. games have that option to turn on motion blur these yeah, days. Yeah, this, so. this trailer, though, it reminded me, like, you know, maybe a little bit less stylistic, but it reminded me of, like, the E3 2000 trailer where they revealed to, uh, Metal Gear Solid 2, and it just had, like, you know, it had, like, little interludes with a story, and then it, it kind of brought in the action and the gameplay, and yeah. it showed you what the game was all about. And, uh, you know, I was like, yeah, dude, this is refreshing. This is exactly what I freaking want to see in a Metal Gear Solid trailer. I remember thinking, I was like, how are they going to, you know, cause we, we, we initially got the, the teaser, which was just like, you know, the, an the ants and the freaking bird and the, you know, all these animals and, yep. and then it kind of zoned in on snake. And that was like a pre-rendered kind of cutscene trailer, but like, and then they showed the in engine look. I was like, I wonder how they're actually going to cut together a actual first trailer of the game. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, this was like short and sweet. Yeah. It just like gave you exactly what you want. I mean, I mean most a lot of people have already played Snake Eater, so they already know what to expect with the game. Right. So they don't really need, like, you know, endless kind of, like, you know, storyline kind of, like, Yeah, stuff I mean, the there was, I remember there was a trailer that Kojima cut, like, maybe about a seven or eight months before MGS3 came out. I think it was an E3 trailer where it was literally like 15 minutes. Oh, yeah. I mean, I remember it was that, just yeah. cutscene after cutscene. I'm like, dude, like, I remember a lot of people, like, back then were like, dude, what yeah, the I remember Param especially was like, damn, dude, what the fuck? Is this trailer ever end? Yeah, you know, oh, it was like literally shit. fucking 15 minutes and shit. And just like, yeah, you know, being a Metal Gear fan at that time and not actually experiencing the game and getting that much of a like a, well, a close up look. You, well, at yeah, the it game. almost feels like you're getting spoiled. Yeah, I mean, there definitely was shit in there. I mean, I, you know, that, that was spoiled for me. I mean, yeah. there was by the time we actually played the game, I, I felt I felt like a lot of the game was actually spoiled. You know, yeah, yeah there was obviously some key stuff that wasn't. I mean, at nighttime Groznegrad uh, was not shown in any of the trailers except for maybe one shot. But like. And I'm like really, really looking forward to see how that fucking looks. Oh, the Grozny Grad on PC stuff? with motion blur, oh, with yeah. the snow, and, and with the snow, lighting, yeah. and the fucking What do you guys think about the phenomenal. lack? What do you guys think about the lack of a piss filter? The lack of a piss filter? Oh, oh, oh no, well, no, it's, it's actually in the game. game. Huh? It's going to be in there. It's optional. It's yeah, optional. have an optional yellow filter in there. Wait, is that confirmed? Yes. Yeah. It's already, they already showed it in the trailer. Whenever you play the legacy mode, or whenever they show the legacy mode in the trailer, it has the yellow filter on it. Oh, and then the producer is actually. Well, it is kind of like toned down slightly. Yeah, but it is definitely noticeable. Okay. The thing is, like, I love the fucking piss filter, dude. I actually, like, really, I mean. I love that people came up with that phrase. I mean, the yeah, the thing filter. is, I, I kind of don't like it, and I kind of feel guilty for even using it. But, like, the thing is, is that, know, like, uh, the, the yellowish filter, it's like a bleach bypass with, like, a yeah. yellowish tone to it. has a lot of sure. bloom on it, too. Yeah, yeah, a lot of bloom. I mean, well, the, it looks good. It looks like, I, I, I actually. I, I, I see it as, like, a term of endearment. It's, like. You know, yeah, you can call it the piss filter, but it's like at the same time, it's like 
it, it does look good. There's a reason why they use it in the original game. Well, yeah, they so even like, used it in uh, in four. Uh, in four. Yeah, in the, a lot in of the games initial that trailers. Yeah. Remember they they had that filter and yeah, it was. I thought it looked cool. You know, I wish there was. It yeah. was optional in MGS4. I probably would have played a lot of MGS4 with that filter on, to be honest with yeah. you. But you know. Um, yeah, but I mean, the, the thing is, like, they had the option of, like, so at first, whenever the, the producer, he had, he, there was a podcast that the producer went on with some guys, mm -hmm. and uh, and they were asking him about the filter and stuff, and he says, like, yeah, actually, it's in the trailer. If you look at the legacy mode, the, the yellow filter is in the, the trailer. We uh, that, that is, so whenever you play the legacy mode, that yellow filter will be in there. And the, you know what the legacy mode is, right? It's basically the original. Yeah, the original, the original control. camera angles. Yeah, the original, yeah, so the original the controls, they, original camera angles. But then if you play the, the new man. mode, it's like it has newer controls, newer animations. But the thing I, is that they've, just, they've come out since and they've said that the, 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 the filter will be available in both modes, legacy and okay. 3D. Wow, so. they, they've thought of everything then yeah i know yeah. dude it's kind of crazy because everybody just thinks konami is dumb as fucking shit and then me and sean have been like dude i mean I, this is like this is literally a make or break thing for them it's not like they're going to just half-ass this game specifically yeah sure maybe the master collection you know they kind of wanted to put it out there get make some money off of it yeah. and uh and kind of like update it along the way but uh which they have a shitload like they've actually updated the fuck out of that's where they they even came out on Tokyo Game Show they had a panel mm -hmm. where they just showed like all of the improvements they had a chart there showing all the uh, like everybody everything that everybody's been asking them to improve and then everything that's already been improved and then everything that's in progress and then the things that are on the to-do list too so they're yeah. actually like listening to the fans and shit so yeah. they're they're updating the fuck out of the master collection they're they're developing Metal Gear Solid Delta in house, so it's not like something they outsource to Bloober or something or some other like team in Europe or something like yeah. that. There's definitely a far cry uh, for, away from like, you know, the the perception of like Konami just being like a greedy company that that just wants to like you know do pachinko machines and just like make profit that way. Which I mean, I wouldn't ever I wouldn't have disagreed with that like maybe five seven years ago. But I mean, there it looks like they're putting a lot of effort like into this game. Like, uh, well, yeah, you know, the thing is, like the pachinko machines. Yeah, sure. As a Metal Gear fan, and like that's used to getting Metal Gear games every few years. It kind of sucks, you know, that they went that pachinko route. But they yeah. made a lot of fucking money off that to fund this project. You mm. know, yeah, and to kind of keep the series uh, alive. We actually got an arcade down the street that actually got the freaking pachinko machine now. So yeah, kind of sucks. Can over, we can go over there and yeah, the freaking game preserve what down the here in the woods. Got it. Yeah, I played it. I didn't really have that much fun playing it, to be honest. But well, you know, did, did you did, did you suck or what? I mean, uh, <laughs> they, they had a mode in there where you couldn't suck. Like they have it oh, on yeah. some sort of like free play mode where you just are just playing it. You don't have to play. You just any... basically have to wait yeah. to see the cutscenes yeah. and shit. Oh <laughs> yeah. So okay. it's like I was just playing the game and as if like you know I had endless amounts of money because it was on like a free play mode. Oh okay. And uh, it is pretty awesome that we've actually the like, cutscenes are cool. Mode. The cutscenes are awesome, but like, dude, the game is just. I mean, I guess it's, you know, it's a Japanese thing. And, you know, the thing is, like, I don't really, like, hate the the, the idea of the pachinko. I mean, I don't hate that game. Yeah. It's made for a Japanese market. They knew that they were going to make a lot of money off of it. Yeah, they and made, they uh, did. And, you know, the thing is, it kind of shows me that Japan or Konami really just really cares about their J J Japanese market, you know, mm. and that their their identity is still Japanese and not just like fucking catering to everything just westernized and shit yeah, yeah. you know i never just really like, thought of it that way but that's actually a really good point like they they, 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 ne they didn't just like bitch out like some of these other freaking uh developers and just like start like you know uh adhering to like all of this freaking you know sweet baby type shit and uh they just kind of stuck to their guns and just waited you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not really that mad. I mean, I already knew for a fact that if they were to have, like, released a, a remake of Metal Gear Solid 3, like, that early after firing Kojima, that it wouldn't have, it just wouldn't have gone down well. Mm. I think they waited till the perfect amount of time till they even, like, relaunched the Metal Gear franchise. Well, mm, maybe. Well, how long ago did they fire Kojima? About 10 years ago now. Probably, like, That's 20, a long 20 time, uh, man. probably nine years ago. Yeah. I mean, well, dude, I mean, for me, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't have given a shit. If they were to have like announced a Metal Gear Solid 3 remake back in like 2018, I would have been just as hyped as I am right now. Oh yeah, but, for sure. But I already know like as the market goes and just like the freaking, you know, I, uh, the the whole, you know, controversy surrounding that whole thing needed time to die off in it from a from a general audience sense though. Like not even a general audience, but just like his fans. You know, yeah. was, there, there was like so much animosity. I mean, they mentioned it at the Game Awards. You know, like all like anybody who's like an actual hardcore gamer that actually follows the industry and shit. They they were like 
you know, they, they, they felt like, you know, like, like hurt by what Konami did to Kojima and shit. Yeah. And, uh, well, it, I mean, for I me, think it wasn't I, an, even until I was actually anti Konami also, even though I bought, you know, uh, Zone of the Enders, uh, you know, Mars, Mars, I bought that and I was like, yeah. very well, I mean, happy the thing is it, it, the well wasn't completely dry, but, but uh, the thing is but, I, I didn't really like kind of like rethink my or you know reevaluate my fandom for Hideo Kojima until Death Stranding came out. Right. And and I was like uh, maybe I should like kind of second look this guy and see if like this guy's really even the reason why Metal Gear Solid was as successful as it even was to begin with. Maybe like Konami was like half of the equation actually. Yeah, I mean I think so. I mean it kind of whenever that whole thing happened with Death Stranding like second ass like yeah. I feel like it made me just reevaluate everything. Like, man, how much, you know, Kojima kind of was a plagiarist, you know? And like, it made me start thinking about a lot of shit about how kinda much start, he, like kind of yeah. just maybe absorbing like, like, a little bit of those, like how much like of the absorbing original, absorbing some of those criticisms and yeah, shit that yeah, we were, that yeah, we had already heard stuff that we just overlooked before. And we yeah. had those Kojima blinders on and we didn't really like, you know, just, we would just look past all the, all of these flaws with this, with this guy, you know, yeah, and I mean, you can like, go back and listen to our previous podcast for the past, like five years. And you can definitely hear our unfettered opinions about Hideo Kojima. I mean, it got to the point that we were so burnt by, you know, what he did with death stranding that we, uh, you know, really recorded like some pretty harsh, uh, you know, podcasts about it. But you know, I still feel the exact same way. About I, it. I, I do. Mm. I mean, I feel I, like I feel maybe like I've I, loosened up slightly, but you know, I feel like I'm still like a little bit more uh, pro Kojima than you guys. Um, but I mean, uh, I mean, that's neither here nor there. We're talking about like uh, the release of a uh, you know uh, Metal Gear Solid Delta. The thing is, like, I feel like I still like Kojima's games, like everything that he did before. It's not like. I, like, believe, like I just hate Snatcher Ko and police knots. And yeah, no, I mean, I, I love Kojima's games that everything that he's made, like yeah. that's why we're still huge metal gear fans, but it just made me kind of like come to reality of like what this guy actually like, just be more objective of like, you know, I don't really have these like fanboy blinders on sure. anymore. I feel like that's more so what, what, like what death training did to me. Yeah. Like it just made me realize like, realize man, that like, okay, wasn't well, now that Kojima doesn't have Konami to push back <laughs> yeah. against him and like a lot of his ideas. Now you can kind of see him more of an incredible yeah, like, sense. See him as he truly is. And like what ideas like really were his, you know, now that nobody's challenging him over at his own studio, you know, he's the one freaking writing the paychecks and like, you know, nobody's going to be questioning him as as, har as harshly as they did at Konami. And, uh, you know, I mean, I just think that uh, he's, uh, you know, he, he, he I, it, it just made me realize, like, how much, like, he actually did to make these games successful. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, it just made me kind of start questioning, like, a lot of the, the inspirations that he had from Coma, you know, the movie mm -hmm. Coma. Uh, and just a lot of other movies, and no, it's just no like where it's, where it's pretty much like weapon. yeah, Lethal Weapon, and just like you know, Terminator. I think one of the Blade main Runner, things that like I kind of overlooked, I, I, you know, the thing is like, sure, the plagiarism is one thing. You know, a lot of uh, you know, a lot of his games we've known that we're like, oh yeah, that's kind of like a you know, Blade Runner ripoff or whatever, you know. But like, I think the main criticism that I have with him that I overlooked big time, just being such a big Kojima fan was the way that he just like shat all over everybody that he had worked with. And then like just kind of like fucking moved shit all over him. Like yeah, as, dude, soon as, as, baby, as soon as he, oh, yeah, he, yeah, as soon as he leveled was, up in cool. the industry, he didn't just kick him to the cool. curb. He literally curb stomped them. <laughs> like he just fucking, yeah, there were stories about like, yeah, I mean, you know, David Hayter, obviously, but then also like, uh, I think Stephanie Justin, like, yeah, I think there was, was Stephanie like little, Justin, there yeah. was freaking, uh, you know, uh, Jeremy Blaustein. There was David Hayter. I mean, the, the, there were like many people that he just like kicked to the curb. Yeah. Where he was like After, very fucking un, see, distasteful. See, distasteful about where he was. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, I just feel like, you know, this guy just like kicked him to the curb. And, you know, it was just not really necessary at all. I mean, everybody that like got that treatment talks about it now. But, you know, I don't know. I just. We're kind of getting off track, though. Let's talk about Metal Gear Solid 3 Delta a little bit. But, uh, yeah, so there's obviously new animations. There are, what they've done is they've imported pretty much all of the animations, including the running, the jumping, the crawling. Yeah. All that stuff has been imported directly from Phantom Pain. 
uh, weirdly, there's like people talking shit about it. I mean, I don't know what that fuck that one video was that we watched. Oh, the, the one was that, that from some random fucking guy that I've never watched. I mean, he puts out videos maybe once every two months or something. Yeah, but he was talking shit about the running animation with bo- the uh, with Big Boss and how he's saying that he's not moving his arms enough or whatever. I'm like, dude. Okay, like, that's like such a some nitpick. nitpicky shit. Yeah, he, he even admitted that it was nitpicking. I'm like, okay, yeah. Why are you gonna go on record even saying it then? Yeah, but like, I, know. I don't know, but like. The animations look great, in my opinion. Uh, there's a couple of animations that I think they need to do work on, like yeah. the, uh, the 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 that one shot of him flipping whenever he lands on the ground mm-hmm. does need to be kind of like. I think it would just look. I think it would look way better with motion blur, though. Yeah, and then there's obviously the animation of him uh, uh, shimmying on the bridge. That's like, that's directly from the Phantom. I know, Pain. but I think it, it still yeah, needs to be still needs. Up. Yeah, it, still looks, needs, it looks it looks it kind of goofy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, other than that, everything else looks great. I mean, I know that like there's some of the CQC stuff, and it looks just like over the top. Like it's not it's not really like realistic looking yeah. per se, well, like, but wait, wait, but wait, it looks badass. What shots are you talking like, about? Like he's like on the guy on the ground. Oh, dude, that shot is fucking awesome. I know it's awesome. I know. I'm not saying it's not awesome. I trust me. I mean, that, I shot, actually, that shot's one of my favorite shots in the trailer. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, I do acknowledge that it doesn't look, like, realistic at all. But the thing is, I don't really care. It's not a realistic... It's, it's Dude, realistic. it looks insanely more realistic than what MGS3 looked like. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. even the Phantom Pain. Yeah. The Phantom Pain, I mean, uh, I feel like the CQC... It wasn't very deep in that game. You kind of just threw the guys to the ground and then they got knocked out and shit, yeah, you know? Yeah. But like this one, it actually looks like you're going to be doing some badass moves with the CQC some, some and shit. Judo. Just kind of like, uh, like uh, you know, just throwing them to the ground and you can hold them up and shit and you can do all sorts of shit to knock them out and just... Yeah, dude. it looks fucking awesome. You know, the you thing know, is, uh, for me, like, I really love the open kind of, uh, not really open world, but the open area kind of aspect of Metal Gear Solid yeah. 3, where you're just, like, in the jungle, you're, like, seeing all this stuff. And well, especially not- now, because, you know, back in the day, like, whenever you were in the jungle, yeah. you were, like, really noticing a lot of the, uh, the 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 limitations of the ps2 hardware right and like especially with the trees and the textures and the flat parts of the map uh you know i remember the grass looking extremely good every single blade of grass was 3d modeled with multiple freaking polygons right and they did really 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 good with that but like now well oh, i mean uh step it forward but, but like I remember like playing the game and then once you got to Groznygrad and it was more like of a kind of uh, archi- like a man-made architecture kind of right. thing, it actually looked way better to me. Uh, playing those then, kind of like indoor areas. Part. Huh? That, it looked better than the nature part. Yeah, it looked a little bit more like it was... Uh, like kind of well because it, because, it matched because, up with the hardware the, limitations the polygonal kind of than, like, than the okay. outdoor stuff i think what they did with the outdoor stuff was absolutely ambitious but it was almost like overly ambitious and then now what we can see is like that they've they've gotten to a point with the technology to where even those outdoor areas look just as good as the indoor areas did in the original game. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. So it's like, I'm like really stoked about that. Yeah. And you know, and just being a big fan of Groznygrad in general, that whole base. And then the other base where, uh, you know, you infiltrate, uh, to, to, to get to the scientist, uh, what was his name? Granin. Granin. Uh, uh, that whole area, man, I can't wait till we start seeing some oh, stuff. Yeah, like I, that. Actually, I feel like there's a lot of things that I like better about that base. I feel like the, it just looked more photorealistic. I remember playing than, that uh, map. Than really? like well, like the, I remember playing that map had, There was like a marble floor. Yeah, yeah, I know. Right? I, think, I think it was just the reflections and like yeah. everything looked a little bit more shiny. Well, that's and, the, and the thing about the MGS2. Yeah, the, the shadows looked so good because it was like kind of like the, the environments were like very low think, polygon. They were able to like double up on the yeah. reflection polygons. You know what's kind of crazy? Like really do that, some cool stuff with baked lighting. Yeah. Where, here's yeah. the thing though about Gros- uh, the, the Gronin's facility is that like the, you know, the, the floor has like marble floors, shiny floors and everything. I, I remember playing that game and just uh, thinking like, man, dude, this fucking like, the baked lighting looks so good mm-hmm. in this area. Oh, yeah. And like, well, the thing is it's hard to do baked lighting in a, in a natural, like forest environment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They yeah, can do it, but it's just like, it doesn't look as photorealistic. Yeah. And I, well, I remember yeah, well, specifically I'm... like, you know, with the legacy camera, I remember the camera angles in that fucking area were like the fucking coolest fucking cameras yeah. out of like everything. Yeah. Like, cause I remember yeah, yeah, playing it with the yeah, 3d yeah. camera. That area didn't really work as well as actually just setting it to the old camera. Cause yeah. I remember whenever subsistence came out and they gave you the option of going back to the old camera. Every time I'd go to that facility, I would put it back to the old camera because mm-hmm. it looks so fucking cinematic and yeah. Yeah. it just kind of highlighted like the graphics. Like you could tell that they were made for that specific angle, oh, yeah. Yeah. you know? Yeah. And I think the reason for that is because like whenever you're into like more like urban man-made like areas, well, the areas are more like blocky. They're more yeah, polygonal. Yeah. So it's yeah. a little bit harder to like, to really take advantage of like the composition of like, you know, the different camera angles. But whenever you're doing like the nature stuff, 
uh, even back then, even though the graphics might not be like as impressive, like you have like, you know, you have so much more variety when it comes to like, you know, like the, uh, you know, the when it comes to composition, with, like the trees and the grass yeah, and like the, yeah, the soldiers yeah, of course, and everything. See, the thing is with those, with those like man-made architectural areas, yeah. like you were able to like really utilize baked lighting, mm -hmm. which is what they did in Metal Gear Solid 2. Yeah. And in Metal Gear Solid 3, I mean, yeah, they did some baked lighting in those, in those forest environments, but you know, the thing is you're dealing with like trees that move in the wind and they're supposed yes. to be casting moving shadows. Right. But now they're able to do that and it yeah. looks fucking phenomenal. Like the, the, all the shot. I mean, here's the thing. So like I've, I, you've probably noticed this in the original game, which was like a really good thing that they added to the game. Mm -hmm. But like in, in, the, in the original Metal Gear Solid 3, like whenever you're snake and you're walking around these environments and even the guards, like everything like has like shadows cast on them. That's like running through right. their, their model. Right. But now like it's, it's actually real time. Like that was just a filter that they put on it. It right. wasn't actually like true shadows. Cast. Yeah, so it, it, it looked, like the rain awesome. it looked, it looked really awesome for the time, you know, but, but, but now they can actually use like, I mean, I was even noticing in the background, you can literally see the, the shadows of the trees swaying in the wind and shit. Yeah. So it's going to make those, those, those environments seem even just more lush and more realistic. So, so we're actually going to see like a shift where like the, the nature, the more, uh, yeah, the more nature focused sections of the game are going to look even more impressive than like the indoor sections. Yeah, to a, de to a degree. I'm pretty sure they're going to really do those 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 areas justice too, though. Yeah. And especially whenever you first get to Groznegrad and it's nighttime and it's snowing, mm -hmm. like I think that's where we're going to see like, oh shit, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna introduce those areas like in, in the Groznegrad like really fucking strongly. Yeah. Uh, man, I can't wait to play that part of the game, dude. Because you know I was I mentioned it in a previous podcast, but you know you get to Groznegrad and it's snowing, right? Yeah. And then depending on like which path you take. Like the snow will just cut out off the because of the PS2 hardware just can't fucking handle yeah. it. So, like actually seeing it just continue to snow the entire time you're there, like it should be. Yeah, it's going to be really powerful, and uh, I think it'll just add to the freaking like the the map a shitload. I hope they don't freaking just take out the snow altogether. That would piss me off. I'm so pretty much. sure. I think they're going to add sure it, dude. I think it. like yeah. they're fucking definitely going to add it because they're probably like uh, from what probably the original intention. Well, not only that, but they got to start working on a snow engine for Metal Gear Solid One. Yeah, they're not going to. They're yeah. not going to. You know. They're not going to waste that, and they're they're going to find an excuse to like you know use more of it of it. If they're going to work so hard to like make it work, right? Yeah. Uh, and also, um, another nice detail that they uh, that I remember from like you know from the video is that they uh, actually like the the injuries that you get. Yeah. Are on the character model now. Oh yeah, no. Well, then they don't leave either. They actually yeah. like heal over the game. Oh yeah, they yeah. heal and then they stay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah the thing yeah. is, they're like more long lasting. That's so yeah. awesome, dude. I like yeah. really like that aspect about it. Like, I wonder how like the the healing sections are going to be like if if they do still uh they're going to choose to include them uh like you know whenever you like you get hurt so you like are are they actually going to instead of like a menu like showing like a healed like you know thing are they going to like actually show you like you know snake like you know maybe suturing his wounds or or burning or cauterizing a, a you know like a cut or like I wonder if they're actually going to show you close up detail of the cellular structure like healing and shit, no, <laughs> <Yeah>. shit. <laughs> that would be that would, well not op obviously not going to do that but like I want to uh, see every bit of his vomit whenever he throws up I want to see I want to see the layers of <laughs> I want to see the layers of skin like whenever you know you get the cut I want to see the layers of skin dude yeah, that's no, what I want to well, see well I mean I wouldn't doubt if they worked on obviously, that to some degree joking. I mean, they, you know, they, at least like the cuts, like kind of like you having some sort of like depth to them and yeah. shit, like, because I know that they, uh, what, from what, uh, David Hayter was saying in that, that promotional video is that they separated the retina from the rest of the eye mm -hmm, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, they're putting a, they're putting a, a whole crazy yeah, level of detail it. into it. Yeah. Fucking really Pretty looking crazy. Like how it, many man? generations are imagine, we now imagine removed? Imagine like, like sewing like a fucking head wound we're, or we're something. We're three yeah. generations <laughs> removed from the original uh game yeah so like i mean it really the technology is really showcasing its its prowess yeah the thing is you know i'm kind of also interested in seeing how they're like with the new camera controls i'm, I'm you know the new mode mm -hmm. uh, i can't remember what it was called i know the old one is called legacy mode but the new mode i'm wondering what like what they're gonna do about like the camo index and like changing camouflage and stuff like that because might, i think might. there's i don't think a lot of people are gonna have the patience to kind of like stop every time they get into a fucking patch of grass that's that's and, like, a good point yeah, yeah and then like you know that's that's literally why they put 
the Octo Camo in MGS fours because right. a lot of people didn't sure really have the patience. Figure out a system where you can like hold in the L three like a... button, yeah, or L three, yeah. And then, and like, then, yeah. Uh, wasn't there a way? Well, yeah, it's kind of like how an MGS four, okay. how you could shake your controller to take away the camo. Yeah, like maybe they're gonna put like a maybe a, yeah, you hold in a button or something and they put in the camo, like the the best camo that you could get for the or the maybe index. you can have like a sort of like a yeah like like a loadout or I, I don't know if a. I might have misunderstood you, but maybe like uh, it might be the same thing. But like where you know how like you press like uh, left on the D pad, right on the D pad, up on the D pad, like yeah. to like select. Maybe do that with like the the different you know have like a, a sort of like a category quick of, menu like, or something. Yeah, like a quick menu for like for like your suit for like your yeah for like for, like your camera. That would suits. be awesome. I mean, I feel like, yeah, I, I, just, I just feel like uh, yeah, they need to do something that's just like a, a HUD based like approach, yeah. or either just doing something where you maybe hold right on the D pad mm -hmm. or left or something, and then it'll just automatically choose the highest camo index, yeah. you yeah. know, for that or, or, patch of it, area you know, that you're yeah, in. Yeah, probably in like an easier mode where you can just like you know quick access like the, the yeah. highest. Because camo. As, as much as I you know as much as I don't like to admit it, is that like, uh, well, the thing is personally for me. I do like I'm I, I like menus. I like I like uh healing myself whenever like I get cut or in that game or like do whatever. It's a very it's almost like almost like a I don't know, like an almost an ASMR experience whenever I do it. Or whenever you're like, oh shit, I'm in the grass. Or uh, I you know, I don't I seriously don't mind pressing start and going through the menu. Here's and, like, the thing. Yeah, no, I, 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 even if they do go that approach where they just have it the like the original game, yeah, it will at least be like instantaneous. Sure. Because no, that's the, true. the menu is, you don't have to worry about way like, quicker, oh, yeah, yeah, loading. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's going to be like, quicker. For it's going to sure. be like, you're already going to be in the menu, like yeah. oh, within a split second. Yeah. They're probably going to have some sort of quick menu for that specifically. But mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I mean, the thing is, I like going through menus too, yep. especially when you're customizing your weapons with MGS4 yes. and stuff. I think yes. I really like doing that in the, in, in the game. My but, main uh, complaint was, yeah, I just don't like doing it so frequently. It's like every time you get shot, you got to fucking treat your wound or like, you know, you got to change your camo. You're, you're like, you're, you're like, fighting against Colonel Volgan and you get your arm broken. Yeah. And yeah it's yeah. like, you know, it's like a heat of the moment, badass music. And it's the final battle. Oh, okay. That's whenever. Yeah. You know. Yeah. No, I feel like sometimes it kind of takes you out of the experience, especially yeah. if you're in the heat of battle and then you got to like, oh shit, my fucking, you know, I'm bleeding. I got to fucking tend to my wound. And yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's like. Sometimes I feel like it kind of takes you out of the game if you just like go to a menu. It just seems a little bit less of a game. Thing is, I and remember more of like a simulation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, in a I, way. Well, yeah. which is kind of what it was supposed to be. But like, you know, the thing is, for me, I also like going through the menus. Mm -hmm. But like for me, the main complaint was just like going into the menu. It took a second to load, and then yeah. exiting the menu, it took a. You know, yeah. I remember it taking like a few seconds to just yeah, there's, go back. There's going to the be absolutely no loading times on that for yeah. sure. And there's not even going to be loading times in between areas either. Yeah, which is that's awesome gonna be too. awesome. Yeah, you know that, right? I'm pretty sure there's gonna be at least a subtitle all, every, or something all, all of whenever the, you enter a new area. Well, yeah, there'll be text, but yeah. you know, whenever you go into a certain area, it's gonna be yeah, just I'll like that shit automatically freaking uh, reloaded. Maybe you have if like they're gonna incorporate just have like healing want, items and like all this stuff. Do you think they're gonna incorporate? You know how in MGS4 how they had like the the cutscenes blend into the gameplay? Do you think they're gonna do anything like that? And uh, I wouldn't doubt maybe? it. In three, I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it. That would be awesome. I mean, why wouldn't they? Yeah. Why would they make you wait? Yeah. Why would they just add a fake loading screen? Or just, well, not only that, but just maybe have it fade to black and then, you know, and then come up with the I mean, cutscene. I think they're just going to hard cut it to the they should, like they, What they, they, they should do is they have the end of the cutscene and ha and pause on that for like a, like the full frame for like a full like three seconds. And then you start the gameplay. Yeah. That's what they needed to do. Yeah. yeah. Give like, you know, make it, make it seamful. <laughs> seamful? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man, I don't know, man. This game, I mean, the Groznygrad looks great. There was only one shot in Groznygrad in this trailer, and I was, like, blown away by it. Well, that it. was the only one with actually gameplay or motion gameplay blur. shot with motion blur. Well, not only that, but just, like, I just saw, like, the level of detail they added to the tanks, and I was like, damn, dude. You know, I feel like dope. the next trailer that they show is going to be a lot more focused on the... Uh, Story? No, and on, uh, it's going to show a lot more characters, like character oh, okay. models and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, because as we know right now, they've only shown Snake and and the, the boss. The boss, yeah. But you do I'm, you do get to see a little bit of Ocelot in there, but not very much. Yeah, he's from what you were saying, yeah, he, 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 scene whenever he's throwing all the guards and shit. Right, he, right, uh, right. The o Ocelot, you know, in that scene is has already been thrown to the ground, and he's mm -hmm. in the background on the floor. Yeah, but uh, yeah, they're gonna. I'm pretty sure they're gonna show him. They're gonna show uh, probably a lot of the other characters, and you know, they build up some hype as far as the uh, as far as that goes. But yeah. honestly, I think all the characters look great. Um, very, I've seen a, a few complaints about like the boss. 
I'm gonna be honest. I mean, if if they ever release the game and she looks like that in the final game, I no not not. I would too be many satisfied. I'll be satisfied. I, I do think they could do a little bit to kind of make her like her cheeks look a little bit more like more the boss, or maybe in. her lips are a little bit too thin in this one. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I think the way that she looks like a hardened soldier and shit, like yeah. that she's been through some shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the thing that I like a lot about the way she looks. She has a sort of like a. Tilda Swinton, like Linda Hamilton, kind of like, you know, kind of look. Yeah, I mean, right. dude, she looks like she's a fucking badass. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. she's been through some shit, and that's why she's There are definitely details that, are, that, that they didn't, that they, for some reason or another, maybe they couldn't, for some reason, recreate with, like, the new character model. But, like... Uh, I mean, the, the, the thing is, I feel like they, what they could do to, to maybe fix the problem is just add maybe a little bit of a, like, a with her cheekbones, maybe have them, like, look a little bit more like the original character. Yeah. And then also the, uh, you know, this there's, there's a part of your lip where it goes down to meets your chin. The fill trim. If they were to make that I think I know a little bit bigger, yeah. that would be better. And then okay. her lips are like a little bit too thin too. I think that her lips were a little bit more full in the original game. Yeah, they were. And then also the maker, like the area where your lips meet your chin, that needs to be bigger. Like it's where there's less mm. chin and more lip. Because, like, if you actually yeah. compare it to the original, that area is, like, way smaller in the new one where it's, like, her yeah, chin her looks all big and yeah, shit. Yeah, and her, cheek, her cheeks need to be a little bit more tucked, like, a yeah, little bit. Yeah, but like yeah. you said, like, if they released it as is right now, it wouldn't even oh, be sure, that. Oh, sure. The thing is, like, we're looking at her at the very beginning part of the game where she's very, you know, she's not even that present. Uh, I want to see her whenever she's, you know. In, Different lighting and actu stuff. An actual Operation Snake Eater. Oh, okay. Where they... Uh, where they actually like you know have her with different hair and she has like a different and, uh, costume and yeah. you know I think uh, I think she will look just fine. I'm not worried about that at all. They already did Snake really really well, so I'm oh, for sure. I'm pretty confident about what they're gonna do with her. Uh, they're not gonna they're not gonna mess that up. They're not gonna mess it up at all in the final game. But yeah, freaking um, what else was there in the trailer? Oh uh, well, they. Are we talking about the trailer itself or the discussion that David Hayter had? Well, the discussion with David Hayter, too, which was a really good idea for that they that they did, like, following, what was it, yep. the day after? I mean, it was or maybe, like, two or three days later, they released this freaking discussion with, uh, uh, was it Okamura? It was more of, like, a uh, presentation, like, a, a promotional video. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, a, a, you know, they just had more information about yeah, the you, game. You know what's crazy, though, is that, like, they don't really mention that he was involved as the director of zone of the enders one. He directed that game. So, you know, like, I mean, uh, I guess, I guess Zone of the enders was just still just that niche. I don't know. Well, I mean, that's well they mentioned not, police knots. No, no, that's, they that mentioned that never knots, even came out over here. The thing is, <laughs> I, I think they mentioned that because they wanted to showcase how long he's been there. But, but the thing is that he's, he directed, I think zone of the enders was, one. Uh, he, yeah. direct, he directed zone of the enders one. He, he produced, produced portable, portable ops, ops, which kind of laid the groundwork for Peace Walker to come after. Then he yep. then he released uh, he he produced uh, 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 what was it uh, digital graphic novel, which yeah. also laid the front the 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 framework for the cutscenes of Peace Walker. You know he's he's kind of like somebody who almost like uh, builds, builds like, like the foundation, yeah, the infrastructure, infrastructure yeah. of a certain kind of thing that they're doing at Konami, and then they take it and they run with it. Yeah, he built Middle or Zone of the Enders. Yeah, I know. And then they made Zone of the Enders two. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, Zone of the Enders one was fucking awesome. I know. Like, I it fucking love that game. One of my I remember, I remember of watching the trailers for that, and I was like, "Holy shit, dude! This game looks fucking awesome." Yeah. You know. Yeah. And was, then we played yeah. it, beat it multiple times, got both endings, and like you know, with both of the ending themes and shit, you know, and Wait, like, it had two endings. Well, they had multiple ending themes. Like the the actual oh. credits theme was okay. different. Right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you could do certain things in the game that would give you a different ending theme or whatever. Okay. But uh, yeah, Zone of yeah. the Enders one is like one of my favorite games of all time for sure. I don't play it as much as Zone of the Enders two because that one is a lot more fucking fleshed out. Yeah, it's like, like it's more refined. Overall. Yeah, it's more refined. It's but refined he's the one who fucking shit. invented the game. Yeah, no, he's, he's it was he's literally the his that, game. He yeah. directed it. You know, he got. It's like you know. Fucking Kojima was working on Metal Gear Solid 2 at the time. He had Yoji Shinkawa. He had the fucking, you know, all the, 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 the you know, the developers at Konami. And then this guy was at the same time as MGS2 making Zone of the Enders, using Yoji Shinkawa's designs, using this, a lot of the same developers, the same engines. And it's like, man, this guy could make a fucking awesome game just that Kojima, like, almost had. I mean, I'm not going to say Kojima had nothing to do with it. Obviously, he provided the resources mm -hmm. and the team 
that had been working on Metal Gear Solid 2, so they were using a lot of the same assets and a lot of the same code for the cutscenes and the, and the game engines and, and oh, yeah. the graphics yeah. engines. So it's like, obviously, they were sharing resources, yeah. but it just kind of showed that this guy could work he he can work with a talented team just like kojima can yeah you yeah, know absolutely and uh and they're working with the same team you know so it's like well, i remember whenever we got zone of the enders whenever we got the zone the metal gear solid 2 demo i mean we freaking played the shit out of that oh, game yeah, no, we loved dude, it the, like dude. so much i yeah. loved it i, I absolutely dude, if you even zone like you know enders we always one. say that oh yeah man zone of the enders 2 it's like the best fucking like you know mech game ever made but like Zone of the Enders one was there, like the there, second there best were, mech game, and, the, the, and, the, and the only reason why I say that it's worse is because it's just part one, and part two is just was more fleshed out. Well, the thing yeah, more is, fleshed is out, like, and the man, combat was like there, more, there are yeah, elements. Yeah. There, there are fun. elements about the first game that I actually like better, like some of the freaking just color palette choices. Oh yeah, and, for sure. I like and, the, oh yeah. like the, I like the overworld where like you're just kind of yeah yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a little bit more of a of an open world type thing too, you know, where you can kind of like choose your area that you want to go to, and you know you got to tend to certain things in a certain area. You got to make choices about, Oh yeah. Do I save my girlfriend over here? Or do I go over here and save like hundred people? You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like, you know, dude, yeah. it was fucking awesome. That o game was awesome, dude. I think his name is Okamura, right? Yeah. He, no, he, uh, he, he is uh, definitely the right guy to do this game. I mean, obviously he has a history with Kojima and Konami. He mean, he worked on numerous projects with, you know, uh, with Konami and he was involved in the Yata series games too. that were, that were, uh, you know, yeah, I think he produced in the, the Metal series, Gear right? series. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he worked on projects that were in the Metal Gear series. So I'm like, I, I absolutely entrust this guy to make the best decisions. He's the best guy that's like obviously like a good producer to be like working on these games. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I agree. He's the, he's the he's the only guy at Konami that is definitely like the guy at Konami that they can entrust. Because mm -hmm. he literally laid a lot of the groundwork for a lot of these projects that Kojima worked on, yeah, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like... Uh yeah, no, like seeing him in that trailer, I was like, yeah, now we have a, a, an actual face to the name of the yeah. guy that's directing this yeah. freaking game. He, he's the new, he's you the know, new he's the new guy. director. He's, he's the, the new, new director. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. So like, you know, I have faith in him. I think he'll do good. I mean, is he going to be as like, you know... Thinking outside of the box as Kojima, probably no. not. But I would say just straight he, up is no. Is that even what like, we need? No. I don't I, know. That's also a no. It's like, you know, I don't think people are looking for as much art house stuff as they were back in the day. Yeah. You know, I think people just want a fun game. Well, art house like, stuff was new back then. Yeah, I know. Like an art house, like film director, like they were just really trying to like make these games like cinematic and have like a really like, you know, kind of like an art housey kind of thing about them where it was like very like kind of creative and weird. But now like, I don't You're really so, it's know. Oversaturated. It's oversaturated. It's over, we're oversaturated in that market now big time. I think people just kind of want like more of like a, 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 a very, uh, grounded kind of balls kind of to the wall, grounded kind of experience with like a espionage action, you know? And I think that he probably knows that like, he does need to be like, uh, you know, tap into his creativity a little bit more. And I think he'll do just fine. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, another thing is David Hayter was in that trailer too. And he was like, He's the new. Yeah, he's like a big. He's like he's a huge face. Yeah, he's like series. the new. Oh, he's yeah. the new rock star. You know, guy that's promoting the series, like Kojima was. Yeah, yeah. He's kind of in some way like I would say that him and Okamura both are like kind of like the the team that are are uh, you know replacing kind of replacing Kojima. Okay. And the thing yeah, is, the thing like is we've David Hayter's obviously like, a creative guy too. Yeah, you know? David Hayter. I mean, he's a creative. Well, yeah, guy. he he's a, he did the screenplay for like a lot of movies. We so. directed a short of uh, uh, Watchmen too. I mean, he's a director. He, he's yeah, he was a behind the, the original X Men. Yeah, he, yeah, he wrote the original X Men, dude. which is fucking awesome. He's got uh, artistic like awesome chops movie, for sure. Yeah. And the thing is, is that like you know, I think Konami made a really, really good decision scooping him up, and just like, how can we get back in the fans? graces good graces best graces uh following the debacle with K kojima yeah and i would say that like they were smart in hiring not only just hiring him but he's literally the new ambassador of the whole metal gear series moving forward he's like the new face of metal gear and like what who what what better of a face can you have than literally the voice yeah you can't really get better character. than you know, like david you have kojima <laughs> going on stage you know he's speaking a different language than most people well, understand yeah sure they fucking love japanese and shit but like you know it's just kojima you know he was a kind of a rock star fucking video game developer but like i feel like fucking david hater 
he just literally has Snake's voice. Like he can't beat that. You know yeah, what I'm no, saying? Yeah, it's like yeah. he goes up there and he just has a fucking leather jacket on he, and shit. And like, and he's just like interviews fucking, that you, in the interviews that you see him in and like you know whatever. Like he's got he's got the voice. He's got the charisma. He's got you know, dude. He's got everything. He's got. Like, well, he's an honorable guy too. You yeah. know, the, the, I don't know if a lot of people know about this, but whenever they did the Twin Snakes, he literally cut his own pay to like hire because they were wanting to move on and hire a different voice cast oh, for that altogether right. yeah, he was like yeah, no yeah, yeah i'll literally like sacrifice a huge chunk of my salary just to like hire the original cast of the game yeah as much as possible and then we'll like do that and like dude i mean what wh i don't even think kojima would approve of that well, yeah i don't know i don't think obviously he would be honorable enough to even do that yeah like no, not absolutely, at all. absolutely not. He's dude. He's kind so of just showing himself to be a just fucking so he can, snake. Like, you know, shit. just to yeah. just for the art, basically. Yeah, exactly. Because he knew that if they freaking changed all the freaking voice actors, that fans would just be like, "This ain't the game I know. This ain't the Metal Gear Solid yeah. I know." Yeah, I know. How many years before it was just like what? Maybe five or six years before that Metal Gear Solid One came out. Yeah, I know. And the thing is, like, you know, Konami or no Kojima was the one that like really curb stomped that guy. After everything that he did for, Which is for like, Kojima. Dude, like it's like and the most shitty, like the ultimate fucking shitty thing to do, like to take the voice. I mean, the thing is, okay, you take you take a property that's like more popular in America. Uh you have than a, in Japan, the country Japan, of origin. You're right. The country of country of origin. And like the voice actor that's like literally the face of the game or like the voice of the game. Yeah. Uh, and you just say, eh, nah, fuck him. Uh, you know, we're not even gonna like let let him know, we're not even gonna give him any kind of a send off and just like replace him with like a Hollywood actor. And it's just like, you know, it's like really disingenuous in the way they did it too, because and they're like, only gonna give his that reasoning was because he wanted to like freaking basically just like up the ante. He wanted to like, Oh yeah, we're going to get up like an actual Hollywood actor. I was like, God, dude, that's yeah, so remember his excuse was like, Oh yeah, we want somebody who can actually do the, the subtle face movements of an actor, you know, because it's not just voice acting now. It's actually we're, we're capturing the performance. Oh, please. I'm like, dude, OK, yeah, yeah so dude. Dumb. like 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 David Hayter couldn't fucking do facial animation. He's already doing the voice. Of course, he's making. Yeah, faces and, he, he's, and he's an voice. actor. He's actually an actor. Yeah. Just like fucking Kiefer Sutherland is. Yeah. I don't give a shit like if Kiefer Sutherland can. You know, if he's been in higher profile movies or whatever. Yeah, I remember, like, I remember, I remember, well, then, I remember okay. them talking about so, like so how why they, they keep Otacon. Huh? The voice actor for, uh, was it, was it James Flinders? Oh, oh. No, Damn it was, uh, no, that was, a. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, that's, that's, a, that's an alias. Uh, Randolph, Christopher Chris Randolph. Christopher yeah. Randolph, yeah. Why, why'd they keep Christopher Randolph then? If it was so important to get like an actual actor. Well, dude, yeah, it's yeah no, it was bullshit. Yeah. The thing it is, it was bullshit. It's like, completely bullshit. Like, I think it's it was just, it was all just a status thing. It was just yeah. a status thing. It was one, oh, yeah, we want actual Hollywood anchors in this game. And it was like, dude, the thing is, like, you've already built this entire freaking franchise off of these characters that your people are already so enveloped in. Now you're just going to pull the rug from them and just, like, have, like, these actors that, like, they can't even attach to the same previous character. And yeah. then they were like, oh, yeah, well, you know, they did the same thing. I remember at the time, Kojima was trying to justify it by saying, like, Oh, yeah, it's kind of like James Bond where like, you know, Sean Connery was the original actor, but then they eventually replaced him with with freaking Roger Moore. I'm okay, like, yeah, well, but that was because he was that? old. <laughs> he was old and he was on screen. You're literally talking about a voice. And obviously Snake, I mean, David Hayter was was obviously freaking capable of doing a young Snake voice still, yeah. you know, and he just went completely you know, he completely like, I don't know, man, it's just like such a dishonorable thing, dude. Yeah, so, yeah so, he did the same thing with Je Stephanie Houston, too, where it was like she was supposed to play, uh, what's her name, uh, Fragile in, the, in Death, Death Stranding. Stranding. And he, she even showed the text on that Young Yeah podcast yeah. and shit where she's like, yeah, these are the texts from Kojima. He showed me the artwork of Fragile and he said I was going to voice this character and then. And then this he didn't even. Nothing. And then after, then he after, after, after he got his, shoulder. after he got crazy. his little fucking you know Hollywood actor to play her, then it's like yeah, then then it just she just got curb stomped, you know? Yeah, it's like okay, like sorry, it's like damn dude, this guy really just like doesn't really build a team. He's not really a good team builder, you know? No, he not just at all. Yeah. he will just like fucking well, give he did everybody that, he did the that shaft. With, uh, he did that with a lot of his music writing staff too, you know? Yeah, no. he just freaking didn't even like i remember there were reports about him uh like kind of really cutting back on uh norihiko hibino and uh tappy obviously so it's not even just like and, a cultural and, and, thing. in exchange for like harry Gregson and williams who was like this hollywood writer it's like oh yeah oh, status 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 i'm like well, dude like people don't actually care about the names 
they care about the quality of what yeah. they're. Yeah, no, obviously, no, no, Hiko Hibino had some of the best tracks in that game. You oh, know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Harry Gregson Williams tracks were awesome. You know, yeah. you know, just uh, as good, just as good, but like. Nothing that Norhiko Hibino or Tappy could have done if they were to just like have that fucking sound engine, you mm-hmm. know, and like the better sound soundboard and like, you know, they are, they were already doing it, you know. So I'm like, dude, like Tappy actually wrote the fucking MGS theme that Harry Gregson Williams just took and fucking went with it, you know. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I just felt like, uh, you know, it wasn't needed. Uh, man, Kojima, I don't know. I feel like that's just like a bad they story. Under, that's, that's, underutilizing even, Kiefer Sutherland anyway. Yeah, I mean, I just feel like, you know, <laughs> we'll it's, facial, it's we'll facial like, capture. <laughs> you know, you're literally like, I feel like a true leader will get everybody, you know, around them. And they're just like, you're all fucking kind of coming up together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But then as soon as you get up to a certain level, you just start fucking kicking people down. You know what I'm saying? As yeah. soon as you're climbing up the ladder, you're just kicking everybody down. But there, you know, you got everybody climbing the ladder with you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's just like, it's like but, but it's one, one of the worst to, traits. Yeah, no. It's one of the worst traits of a creator that you yeah, can have. I know. It's just like, like so somebody that's just like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go with this pre-established fucking thing. Oh, I'm gonna go with this pre-established thing. And then like fuck all these people. You know, it's like, dude, these are literally your family and shit. The people that fucking made you who you are. Yep. Like yeah, for like you 15 can't, years and shit. You can't fucking like just kick these keep people to the curb and shit. You gotta yeah, fucking dude, you like can't be, you can't keep doing that shit. Yeah, you can't even that, do that, it that's once. one of the things that, I, you know, one of the reasons why I disrespect him so much is because he does that shit to people. Like, I feel like even if, I don't know, I feel like he will still do that to people because, you know, obviously, like, everybody that's involved, like, uh, say the guy that's doing, um, you know, the voice of uh, Higgs, you know, what's that guy's name? The big, the big game voice the, actor, the guys that did Robert Ocelot. Yeah, no, I was gonna say Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, but the but, thing uh, is, like, <laughs> I felt like he'll kick that guy to the curb as soon as he gets another high-profile like actor in Hollywood or, or some Norman shit. Reedus. Norman yeah, Reedus? So say if like Brad Pitt came into the picture. Yeah, you know he know would saying? replace Norman Reedus with Brad Pitt any day of the week, or yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio. He yeah. would literally kick him to the curb immediately. Yeah, yeah. or just any of the fucking like people that kind of have been fucking growing with Kojima this whole yeah. time. Yeah, maybe some of these like you know how he gets. Uh, you know, some of these singers to sing his theme songs and shit. Like, he'll just replace, Man, really, them. He'll really, really he'll replace them in a heartbeat with somebody that's, like, more established. It was like, be, Man, it dude, be, why don't you actually get these people and bring them up with you? Yeah, it would like, be really good to see, like, like he, like, gets, like, some sort of, like, freaking, uh, some sort of, like, uh, deal with... Uh, Troy Baker, that's his name. Yeah. Sorry. It would be really cool to see Kojima get, like, knocked down... In the fashion that he knocked everybody else down. Like, if somebody, like, oh, yeah, we don't need Kojima. We don't need some fucking, like, low tier director to fucking, like, direct so to our continue, TV series. Uh, to continue we're going to get fucking, best like, <laughs> yeah, we're going to get James Cameron to replace Kojima, like, any day. Like, <laughs> yeah, I know. Dude. Yeah. I mean, that would be so funny to see him fucking eat his own shit like yeah. that, dude. I wouldn't, would even, it... I wouldn't even be surprised if that's what happened with OD, because I know that he, like, is getting, like, four big directors. I wouldn't even doubt if, like, people turn him down, like Christopher Nolan or some shit. It's like, I ain't going to work with Kojima, you yeah, know? Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't. It's like a fucking, uh, you know, he's never even directed a fucking movie or a show. And then, you know, his his writing is very questionable, too. If to put it, you know, to put it lightly, it's fucking Princess Beach shit. <laughs> it's like, good God, dude. Yeah. All right. Actually, before we go into this, I want to just mention that, like, there's like this notion that, like, Kojima is the only one. See, I've even I'm even guilty of this. I I always think that like there's no way that anybody's going to be able to step into Kojima's shoes at Konami and like if they were to direct a new Metal Gear game or somebody that can like create uh, like take creative liberties the way he did with like creating new cutscenes, you know? I yeah. feel like uh, obvious there dude, there's people all across the globe that can step into Kojima's shoes at this point with the tech, especially with the technology that's available now. I mean, I feel like back in the day, like him being at the forefront of like motion capture and video games and like, you know, cinematic cutscenes and like creating characters and stories and stuff, dude, there's like an infinite amount of fucking people out there that can like take this sort of thing on. And so if they were to like direct a, or develop a new metal gear game from scratch, like they could do it. 100%. They could have Ok Okamura produce it. They could bring in a director that would actually like be like a maybe a fresh face that could actually like uh you know 
create stories and characters and, and, and cut scenes. I mean, it's just like something that Konami's already been doing. I mean, it's like, you know, you got to give Konami a little bit more credit. They had a lot more to do with like the creation of these, of these, uh, you know, uh, of these freaking, these scenes and the story and well, everything. I guess that's what so- sort of happens whenever you like basically just put up a, a face like in front of like, you know, a property and have this be like, this is his thing. Like, you know, they, they even, yeah, it's, it's what became the meme is like, this is a Hideo Kojima game. Yeah, I remember yeah. even so like all, there, there, there he, was a thing he, that came out. All the credit like, goes to I him. think it was before Metal Gear Solid came out. It was it was something called the Kojima Black Disc and the Kojima Red Disc. Oh, yeah. That had this face on it and shit. Like, if yeah. you like, it, was a, it was a soundtrack CD of a compilation of like remix Police like, knots and Metal Gear One yeah, and Two. Police knots and Metal Gear One and Two. It was a it was a compilation of remix tracks from those games, and then it just had Kojima's face on it. Yeah, and I literally thought that it was Kojima on the keyboard and shit. And <laughs> yeah, fucking dude. Like, I yeah. the same thing. They I didn't like, give oh, credit dude, to anybody I was else. The vinyl. Yeah, it was he, completely. He literally just dude. stepped in and fucking put his fucking face on there and shit, like a fucking like the narcissist that he is, and just like took credit for everybody else's hard work that they put into that. Yeah, you know? it was really stupid. They literally put his face on both of those. Yeah, and it. Like, he said Hideo Kojima black disc like he was the artist and then the black disc was the fucking the sound the soundtrack I'm like dude what the fuck is this shit yeah. you know it's just like it goes to kind of show like well the perception like even me yeah. when I was a kid I was I thought that that he actually made those soundtracks and produced them but he had nothing to do with mm. those well I mean why well, I, I would have to say like back then it was more like I think I knew that it was it was more of like a he's like the face of that like it's sort of like a well, whenever we went to Japan and there was like these like all these artists that like made a cover for like made all these covers for uh for uh for Yellow Monkey. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. I remember that. So like, you know, they probably they might have had like, you know, like well, what if they had like the singer's face on there? Like we would know that, you know, uh that these covers or at least we would assume that like these covers they didn't have like the direct like uh uh it's like they didn't make those covers. It was yeah. people making a tribute. Yeah, so but they like, didn't plaster fucking Yellow Monkey on the cover like they were their songs, which they were their songs, but it was the freaking artists, all the other alternative artists that yeah. did the music. So, you know, it's just, it's very disingenuous for Kojima to put his face and even okay that. Mm. It's like, oh, yeah, my face is going to be what markets this and we're going to be able to sell more copies because I like, don't know. I, I think I could see the. I can't. I think they should have just used artwork from the game. The game speaks for itself. The game is what you play. Dude, whenever, it was when, the when, Konami Kukaha Club. When, when, whenever you play Metal Gear One and Two or Police Knots or Snatcher, you don't. You're not plastered with Kojima's face. You're plastered with the game. So you need to use the game to 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 market the. You know the the freaking the, uh, the, the, the main actual, point, the, the music of the game. Yeah, the main point that I'm trying to get at with this is that like. You know, being like, at, you know, I was like 16 at the time. And yeah. like, whenever I saw those and I was listening to him and I literally thought that he was the guy that was actually the artist behind it and shit. And then like, but it's, you know, it just kind of shows you that like this guy has just built himself up from the beginning as like this fucking guy that's just in charge of everything. And he's the one that he's the reason why all this shit is like, you know, so good. And like, mm-hmm. uh, in me, I'm just like, I get this idea in my head that like Kojima is just like involved with like. You know, he, he's the mastermind and shit. And like, you know, this wouldn't have even happened without Kojima. But uh, the thing is, these people literally, this specific product, the black disc and the red disc had nothing to do with Kojima. Okay. He just fucking okay, like, I th- I think put his name on it. From. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he like, didn't write the music of, of the remix. He directed, he, he directed he, the games of the music. I mean, it's literally no different than like basically the, the 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 soundtrack for titanic comes out which was done by you know uh fuck i forgot his name brad fiedel huh? Huh? was it brad fiedel or no that wasn't brad fiedel oh. that was terminator but oh. like a, 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 oh the song wait well, what are you saying the soundtrack soundtrack for titanic well just yeah say if, if, yeah. if it was the soundtrack it, it, for terminator yeah, it, 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 just it, it, had his yeah, fucking it face. like it has his face on it and it was just like and james then it, cameron yeah. terminator, terminator 2 soundtrack you know and okay. then it's like not even his music at all yeah okay no i i agree because it, it is, you're looking back, I guess it is kind of weird uh, in comparison. Because if you have like a game where like, you know, he was a director of, and I guess, um, I guess it's it kind of causing the question, like what really caused that in the first place? Why? I guess because they wanted to like put a, a face behind, like may, may, put, put, put a face like uh, behind like a franchise. I'll bet maybe... you what happened was this. I bet you All what right. happened was like Konami was like, we're going to release a, 
a collection of music. We want you to decide what songs are going to be remixed. And he was like, okay, this is my selection. And that's then probably they, and, about it. I mean, yeah. The thing is, but, you and, know, then, the whole, and then and then the rest of the team well, did the work. Yeah, the, whole, thing, well, the whole point of this is just that, like you know, Kojima gets a lot of credit for shit that he didn't fucking do. I, and, I, and then yeah. you know, the thing is, like, I feel like this, mm. this, these steps that he took to make sure that his face was on the fucking label of everything, like, is the reason why everybody thinks that you can't do Metal Gear without Kojima. Yeah. You know, I think it's just and if you can do Metal Gear without Kojima. Yeah. This is the perfect example. And, uh, you know, I, th I think it had more to do with the fucking people that like actually put did all the hard work, actually wrote the music. Kojima had nothing to do with the music uh, that was actually being written. You know, uh, he had literally nothing to do with it. I think a lot of it has to do with like the the marketing of like well because like even before the red and the black and red disc, uh, well yeah well, like just the you know the inception of like the whole like Metal Gear Solid like uh, project was that you know the, the, from the very beginning that game was labeled a Hideo Kojima game. Nobody yeah. knew who the fuck Hideo Kojima was. Yeah. Nobody. So yeah. like whenever you play that game and it's like a fucking bass of a game, you're gonna associate. Hideo Kojima with that game. So I'm guessing that the reason why they did that is because like, you know, you're going to have, they, they decided to build up Kojima as like, you know, the, as like a big, a as big a, boss. As, a, as a false God. As a false God. Like, yeah. you know, like in the MGS4 cutscene, right? <laughs> like they, they uh, a, like a fucking idol and they, they kind of deified him in like, you know, in that, in that, uh, that franchise and like, you know, and, and, and yeah, that, the thing is Konami is the one a, that actually like made Kojima though. Yeah. So they can make somebody else the next Kojima. You know what I'm saying? So it's not. Uh, that's why I think like they can create it's, it's another not, yeah, Kojima. Yeah, no problem. There's yeah. all sorts of creative people out there that are willing to step that up are to waiting the to get yeah. their freaking name out there, and you know, it's the same way that Kojima was. Yeah, and that's what I feel like. You, it's actually better to fucking like now that the the franchise is being kind of rebooted. It's kind of good to get people that are hungry you know yeah. like a creative maybe hungry. this time not have like one person maybe like it, it yeah like, like, like you see like david Hayter and okamura or like yeah. you know kind of helming this whole like project you know where it's like at least like being the face of the franchise and i feel like uh you know they're gonna bring on some other directors that are just like want want to step up you know and actually yeah. be the new director and, and of that, the metal gear franchise and that being said like the thing is i mean we've been trashing kojima like a lot and the thing is i i still like he was still behind you, even if we were to acknowledge like the plagiarism that that might have that that took that took place with like police knots and snatcher. There's still there's still like uh something that is uh, distinctly Kojima in those games and and, and MGS one and like MGS two, uh and like I I still I still do have a lot of respect for Kojima for like for those games. Obviously, think, he had a lot of fucking say in the actual games that he was creating. I'm yeah. not saying that. Like uh, I'm saying that like he took credit for a lot of shit that he didn't do. Yeah. And so like I just think that people like whenever I see like you know for instance like the this new trailer that came out. You know, you see this the, this shot. Uh, you know, I mean, somebody actually made a YouTube short where he's like, "Oh, I I corrected the Metal Gear Solid Delta trailer," right? And it's just that opening shot of the C one thirty coming in, and then, um, and then, you know, in the original game, it said a Hideo Kojima game, right? And then, so the new one, it said like. I forgot what it said. It didn't say hit a good Konami. Game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Something Konami like presents or some shit. Right. Right. And then, uh, but yeah, he's like, Oh, I'm going to correct it. And he just put a hit Kojima game over like the, the video of the new trailer. Yeah. And I'm well, like, you know, you know what? Kojima didn't have anything to do with what you're seeing on screen other than like, you know, the original shot idea, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and, uh, you know, every, everything that went into actually creating this, uh, creating Delta was not Kojima. Yeah. And like, there's you no know, way in hell they're going to put his name on anything like that. He's not an employee of the company anymore. He's not in charge of directing the team that is responsible for creating this Metal Gear Solid Delta game. And, you know, that's just that's just the facts, dude. Well, the thing is, they just well, like, well, like, like we mentioned before, he, they decided to in the beginning, they decided to put a face on like the Metal Gear name. And, uh, you know, they wanted to amplify his image to where he's like, you know, yeah, he's basically the god of this universe. Well, now that he doesn't work there, they don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. And so they're not doing that anymore. Um and the thing is they they probably they probably don't need to do that anymore because I mean we're, we're going to have to they're going to let the the work show, show, you know, let the work show uh for itself. And like just let, you know, it's going to be a badass, you know, uh game. It's going to be like, you know, it's going to be like a really you know, very successful. And so they don't really have to go with that marketing anymore. Um, and that's just, that's just that. Um, and people might, 
people might complain. I'm not, I, to be honest, I haven't seen that many complaints. So I mean, Mary, I can, uh, we can I'll already tell you see it thing, working. Dude, I think, uh, you know, uh, Konami has taken every right step with this freaking remake that they could have possibly made. Uh, you know, from everything from getting David Hayter on board to remaking the game with the original voice acting to remaking the game with all the original cutscene yeah. camera angles, yeah, doing the legacy mode, the doing legacy the, yellow mode, filter, the yellow filter, the freaking the new, everything, the new, the new control schemes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they literally are are making this a game that is straight up like everything that any fan could possibly ask for. I mean, they haven't taken one misstep so far that I've seen. So. I mean, I can definitely see why people are like kind of not necessarily like kicking Kojima to the curb, but like they're just like kind of just ditching that whole mindset that like, oh, yeah, this whole controversy yeah, that happened. 10 I definitely years kind ago. of expected a little bit more of that. Like, oh, this is a Hideo Kojima game. What are you talking about? Like, but I'm not. Yeah, dude. There's not I that mean, much the thing of a is, big, like, uh, you know, wave of that. Yeah. The thing is, like, I don't know. I feel like Kojima, like. I kind of want to see somebody who's more hungry, like because I, I liked Kojima's like rise more than like what what I'm getting of him. Yeah, the, at the journey top. is you know better than the destination. You yeah, know? no, like, I just like you know him at the top. I don't give a shit about like whenever he was coming up to the top and his whole journey from yeah. the bottom to the top. That was fucking awesome. Everybody you know? loved the underdog. Yeah, story, I don't, I don't want to see fucking Kojima even direct a new Metal Gear game because he's already like. All he's going to do is just, like, fucking put Hollywood actors like in he's it. Gonna, he's going to put rope guns in it. Yeah, no. Yeah, and then yeah. he's going to fucking put, like, actors in there that refuse to be part of a project that has any violence in it. You know yeah, what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. dude. He's going to be dealing with people that are, too, like, more high caliber than he is, which is the problem. Like, what happened with freaking Death, Death Stranding. Stranding. Yeah. He was working with that actress. What's Lindsay her name? Wagner. Uh, huh? Lindsay, Lindsay Wagner. Lindsay Wagner, who was like, oh, yeah. You know, she was going, yeah, he told me that he this game was not going to be, it was going to be anti-violence. And I'm like, yeah, dude, but, like, what about the fans? Yeah, what about the what gamers? What about the game, the game players, dude? The thing is, I can, I can respect a uh, sort of, like, uh, going like a very like sort of like you say art house kind of approach but the thing is i will admit i am going to admit i'm not going to play that game until i'm like at retirement maybe probably yeah that's what i'm thinking too yeah you're probably <laughs> like, not gonna give a shit about it i know the thing is i'm gonna too. probably <laughs> i'd rather play like other games than this like i would, I, I would I'm rather not, replay I'll, metal gear solid one i will yeah, I'll I'll talk exactly. this game as like a you know as a you know interesting artistic expression you know Right, but the, at the, um, at the end of the day, I'm going to be totally honest, man. There's other games that I, I I've got on my mind right now. Oh yeah, and I'm probably sure. going to have other games that are going to come out, you know, back to back, like after that, way before I. Oh ever yeah, play you're going to have trend. a backlog of games. I mean, I already have a. Everybody backlog has of games. a backlog yeah. of games. Yeah. I don't think anybody in their retirement is going to be like, oh yeah, I want to go back and play Death Stranding. I already can't walk. You know, like <laughs> yeah. At least that know, game like, will make me. Feel I already like I'm can't walking. walk. Maybe yeah. this game will make me feel better about not being able to walk. <laughs> <laughs> I not don't really. Know. I feel like that game is just like. There's even a, better. Like there's even, there's even better walking yeah. simulators by then. Yeah, yeah I know. Even it's better. Like fucking <laughs> literally remember. It's like gets these old fucking people that don't know how to walk, but they, oh yeah, now I remember how to walk. Oh yeah. this game taught me how to balance myself. Maybe if I just yeah, yeah, press right. L1 press R2 and R2 to like you know <laughs> balance myself and just like press L2 if I go too much to the right. Yeah. Maybe if I just push R1 and L1 together, I can walk again. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, like. I don't know. The whole thing is with that game is freaking stupid. But yeah, yeah. Go, 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 I don't, don't, don't want to go too much into death. Yeah, go, 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 going into other stuff though, you know, we were, uh, you know, obviously in the uh, in the hype phase of this game, we were kind of watching every video. I mean, I was literally going to YouTube, typing in Metal Gear Solid Delta, refreshing or, or uh, I'm sorry, filtering Sort-sorting it, it. Yeah, yeah, sorting it by date uploaded. So I made sure I saw every video, and there was this one video that actually got a lot of you know. You know, a ton of traction, but it was like enough to be kind of like somewhat alarming. And the th- here's the thing. It was basically about like how Konami after Metal Gear Solid Delta needs to go back and like remake Metal Gear 1 and 2 for the MSX as like the next two games. And okay, the thing I'll, is there was, was actually with you until you said the next till two games. Yeah, no, that's the thing. <laughs> like, yeah, fuck? remaking Metal Gear one and two is, is actually a good idea, but as the next two games is absolutely not. And here's the thing. Like, I don't think that, that Konami is even going to 
you know, they listen to like fan stuff, you know, fan uh, comments on the internet and shit. And they, they, they are listening to fans right now, but I really don't think they're going to listen regarding this. Uh, how many fans are actually asking for a middle gear? One well, I don't know. On this video, it seemed like a lot. And like, it was like, oh, you know what? Yeah, dude, you know, you know, we need to remake metal gear one and two. I yeah. Know, before dude. we do metal gear solid. I'm like, dude, like this is the worst idea. And the reason, the only reason I even wanted to like bring this up on this podcast was because I just wanted to like throw it out there with like the other opinions and just like give my opinion on it uh, about how freaking stupid of an idea that is because, you know, for numerous reasons, I mean, not, not even business sense. I would even argue artistically. Well, it, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a good idea. I mean, let's be clear. Metal gear one and two by today's standards are not good games. You can go back and play metal gear solid one. And it actually still is like somewhat of a good game, like not even somewhat of a good game, but there's like so much rich content there. I yeah. mean, you play metal gear solid one, on the master collection, let's just say. And then you're like, oh yeah, man. Uh, and then you're thrown into a 3D environment. So people are used to it. They uh, have the voice acting. They have the cutscenes and 3D, their cinematic approach, very deep story, refined, uh, you know, at least enough of a refinement of the, of the stealth mechanics that went yep. into the Metal Gear series uh, to a point to where they're still like uh, playable today. Um, but, you know, these these people that are saying that we need to remake metal gear one and two before we go into metal gear solid are just out of line. I don't know what the well, hell's is going well, on. Not only this. that, like this is the game. This is the game that put the series on the map. It is the, the this is yeah. the game. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you have to think that like metal gear solid. I don't I mean, the thing is like, there might be some listeners here that are like unaware of like the impact that this game had, but you know, Go back and read some articles before this game came out, you know, like that were like hands-on reviews or, or previews, uh, you know, g game uh, magazines that talked about, you know, just like the, like, uh, or what do they call them back in the day? Like, uh, like, uh, re not retrospective, but you know, just like this stories covering the game yeah. before the game came out. And they're just like talking about it glowingly, like, oh my God, this game is going to be, I mean, uh, they're, they're freaking, this is the most mature game we've ever seen. Right. I mean, the, the hype for this game was so crazy. And it's, it's very evident whenever you go back and you read articles about like the game before it came out. And I mean, I, I actually went back and I bought a lot of these magazines. I just scooped them up off eBay. Any, yeah. any article, any magazine that had Metal Gear Solid on the cover that did a full in-depth uh, preview for the game, I, I got it. And I just was going, I was like, man, dude, this game was like definitely like way more of a game changer than I gave it credit for. Thing is, like nobody was talking about Metal Gear 1 and 2 that way before at they all. came out. At yeah, all. And, they, yeah, exactly. and, 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 then, and then the game came out, Metal Gear Solid. And it was just like, a huge like cultural just, phenomenon is a cultural phenomenon it, it, it made a huge impact on gaming period i mean it was it, 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 from the real time cut scenes to the story to the to the to the tone to the right. freaking gameplay i mean this game was so freaking fleshed out and like well thought out uh it, it's not even worth considering this game changed people's lives yeah. it did I'm not even, I, I even, I'm not even a, exaggerating. It I changed a, people's yeah. lives. I have a friend that literally went to go fucking fight for the country in Iraq because of the <laughs> game. He played Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. I don't even think that was Hideo Kojima's intention. Yeah. But, you know, it just. Uh, it was like the opposite intention. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah, but, yeah, like, yeah, I, anyway. this is the the type of, sure. you know, freaking inten the, the intention. The type of impact of like, that yeah, it had. Yeah, yeah. And Metal Gear Solid, whenever it came out, was such a huge deal. It, it, it like encompassed the entire industry. Everybody was talking about Metal Gear Solid for those, uh, you know, for probably about the, the, uh, a year to two years after it came out. Yeah. Everybody that I could even think yeah. of. How many lives? Because I, I was in sixth grade when this game came yeah, out. Yeah. And I remember playing it. I remember thinking, I mean, this is like such a huge step forward for the industry. Mm -hmm. Like this is like uh, taking the freaking what we're used to and just you, like. Even if you're like, not an industry savvy, like kid or whatever, you're. You're, you're going to play this. this game and you're going to be fucking, dude, how many fucking lives did fucking Metal Gear 1 and 2 like change? Like, uh, countless. Fucking, well, it, it, like you no, said, no, it no. was, it was, it was what put Metal Gear on the map. Metal no, no, Gear no, I'm 1. Saying, no, no, no. I'm you're talking about Metal Gear Metal, 2. Metal Gear 1 and 2. Metal how many, how many lives did it change compared not, to Metal not, Gear? Not very many at all. Probably like, I, 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 probably zero. Probably zero, percentage. to be honest with you. 
Probably yeah. zero. I don't think anybody played Metal Gear 1 and 2 on MSX or NES, and they were like, oh, man, I got to go freaking, like, change my life because of this shit. Yeah, I'm going to go enlist in the military because of Metal Gear 1. <laughs> yeah, dude. You know? Like, it, it never even, like, was probably even an afterthought. They probably beat the game, and they were done with it, and they didn't even think about it. Yeah. Probably until like uh, after you know. Uh, At least with Metal Gear Solid One, you were you were told that love could bloom on the battlefield. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe you could find your significant other on the in the in the fucking battlefields or something. Yeah, yeah, dude. So like, I don't know. I just I really think that like the whole concept of of remaking MGS or I'm sorry, Metal Gear One and Two is like what absurd. Fucking, what Those if, games are like laughable in in comparison, in comparison to what the the Metal Gear Solid not, not series they're not brought. Good. But like, I'm not going to say that the stories are just flat out laughable, but they're more laughable in comparison to the Solid series. Like, you play Metal Gear Solid compared to Metal Gear 2, which is just the one right before it, yeah. and it's just like, oh, yeah, this is kind of silly. Like, it, it is very silly. Like, to go back and, like, remake this game as if it's, like, something more than that is kind well, of Well, not, not to mention like, it would be the ultimate cock block. Yeah. It'd be the ultimate, like, okay, just imagine if you fucking, you're watching, uh, okay, we're going to remake Star Wars. We're going to start with episode four. Yeah. Hell yeah. Fucking re fucking badass cast and, you know, badass music. And we're going to make remake everything. It's going to be so well done. And then uh, we're going to oh, we're going to fucking make a movie about a, a novel that was released, uh, you know, around that time. That was like kind of somewhat popular for like novels and stuff. We're just going to make a movie for that. Yeah. Here's That's the like, thing. Like, here's here's what fight. I think about Metal Gear one and two is that like as a general like gamer, you're not really supposed to play Metal Gear one and two. Like Metal Gear Solid already fucking fleshed out everything that yeah. was in those games, and uh, the in fucking, a better way. Yeah, there, it actually like redid a lot of things that were especially in Metal Gear Two, like with the the you know battling all the guards in the elevator and stuff like that. Yeah. And fucking, there's a lot of fucking moments in Metal Gear Two that are just straight up recycled, re recycled in, in Metal Gear yeah. Solid One. Mm, and uh, I like I would say about like at least ten moments in the game where uh, it was. Uh, it, it was just completely recycled. And I'm like, man, it would kind of lose its, it lose its significance if you were to just get a remake of Metal Gear. Metal Gear, if, if you were to remake Metal Gear 1 and 2, like the whole kind of like mysteriousness surrounding those games and Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. Because that's kind of what it's supposed to be like. Because I think Kojima knew for a fact that like most people, like probably about 99% of people that played Metal Gear Solid did not play Metal Gear 1 and 2. Right. And that's how the game was made. You know, it was literally like, okay, we're going to like really kind of, you know, have, like we're going to mystify Metal Gear 1 and 2. Yeah, you definitely You, you don't not... get that mystification with fucking yeah. like, uh, if you just remake those games as if they were a new fucking Metal yeah, Gear you game. Yeah, you definitely, 100%, you did not have to play those first two games. No, you did not at all. Like, I think those games all. are just like, should exist as they are, as some sort of just like, okay, yeah, these were kind of like funny little quirky games that were just 8-bit and shit, mm. right? And, um... They're good for what they are. They were like, you know, definitely the most mature fucking, you know, eight bit games out there. But like, dude, like, I, I think if you if you compare it to like Metal Gear Solid, that was like literally like, man, I don't know. It was it, it was like going from zero to a hundred. You know yeah. what I'm saying? As far as like it being like the present, the present, yeah, dude. the presentation, the you know the the graphics, the the gameplay, the story. It was just so much more fleshed out than Metal Gear Two which came before yeah so, and, so uh, much so much that it like it literally created a genre literally created like was like one of the fucking pioneers of like you know like uh of, like storytelling and gaming pioneers of like cutscenes in fucking gaming yeah like dude it, it did so much that like it, it's just it's just ridiculous to like say oh you know what we're just gonna go ahead and remake uh, uh three and after that we're just gonna go ahead and remake uh one and two after that like i'm gonna get one and two the thing is like the thing it would I, just straight up damage the franchise. It if they would were to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 It, the thing is, I, th I think Metal Gear yeah. One and Two should remain in their state that they're in right now, just because they need to be mystified. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well. Yeah. The I, most that they I need to do. I slightly disagree with that. The most of the, I think they they could do, they could benefit from a remake, but it wouldn't be as it would be like a very minimal remake. Just yeah, like, would, make I, it I, HD. I, 
Make it HD with like new textures, still make it the same overhead map, but just make the maps like scrolling like they were in Ghost Babble, make the controls yeah. a little bit more refined, and then make the voice, the cutscenes voiced by I've, uh, actors. If, if those like, games I'm aren't in. fucking unplayable, then they're not going to be mystified in Metal Gear Solid. Because, right. dude, the thing is, the way they talk about Big Boss and Big Boss's yes. remains, it's like, oh shit, like who the fuck is this Big Boss guy? And then you like read about him in mm -hmm. the fucking files and shit. Yeah. And then it's like in the briefing missions. They they if you play those games, they don't really carry the same weight. You know, whenever they're talking about, oh yeah, me and uh, Gray Fox, we battled in a minefield and well, shit like that. And then you actually see what the fuck it was in the eight bit version. It's like, dude, this is like some fucking but, stupid but, shit. But also, e okay, <laughs> yeah, I agree. E even if you were to make like you know, uh, I think the pacing would just it just wouldn't wouldn't really work because artistically it would just makes because like yeah, I agree with you that they they should be like uh, mystified, and but I feel like what what a smart thing would 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 be uh if they were to like go through the timeline you know go from three to metal gear solid one then two and then maybe between three or four or maybe even after four but like actually that would be the right time to make a proper yeah i agree i actually i already talked to sean about this yeah, uh before to make a whenever we were like you know this this past week i was like you uh -huh. know what they need to do they need to remake metal gear solid three which they're doing yeah then jump to metal gear solid one mm -hmm. metal gear solid two Metal Gear Solid 4, like maybe like they don't even need to remake that one. Maybe just add some, you know, HD it's textures, make it 4K. They, 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 they do a, a remaster of Yeah, that remaster game. of that game. And then uh and then uh and then go back to Metal Gear 1 and 2. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, have that exactly. like ha have a new director that's actually gonna work with, you know, maybe a little bit of Kojima's fucking, yeah. you know, uh it's like it, take am, that am, game I, yeah. and just like Think of it like as a as a as a roadmap of yeah. like you know the key points to cover in the game, but just like make it more modern. You know what Here's I'm saying? Here's the thing: is that if they, they were to remake Metal Gear One and Two right after Metal Gear Solid Three, then they would need to like redo everything from the voice acting to the level design, yeah. Oh, yeah. graphics. They would have to redo the whole. But like, like they would need to redo everything. So like, yeah. if they were to redo everything, like every, I mean everything, and pump everything into that, it would obviously be like a new game at that point. Yeah, it would be like a, it wouldn't even be like a remake. It would be like a new game. I think they'll be ready and, for and, that. And, and, and then imagine yeah, if they I remade so Metal Gear Solid One after that, it would actually feel like a downgrade. Yeah, I know. So uh, like, they need to remake yeah. Metal Gear Solid One. Yeah, I know. First, yeah, that, that's then why, do yeah. Metal Gear Solid Two. Then, if they have the creative liberty to go back and redo Metal Gear, see that would actually be the best case scenario yes, because a lot absolutely. of people have reservations. Like I was talking about earlier, like oh yeah, you know, are they able to like you know, create a story from scratch that will actually be able to like you know freaking uh, you know. Uh, to match up to like what like Kojima did. Well, I mean, you can literally take Metal Gear One and Two at that point and make that the new game. Yes, Metal, make that Metal Gear Solid Six. What would be really, what would be really beautiful about this is that it would all come full circle because you know how like in this first, you know, the first wave of like Metal Gear games yeah. with like uh, you have like it started with uh, Solid Snake, yeah, but then you end up with like uh, um, a Big Boss being the main character of the series, yeah. So, but then like if you do go go down this route, you you start with Big Boss as the originator of like the series, and then. You go, you know, what, what we're talking about, and then you end up with Solid Snake being like the main character of the series, like once again. Yeah, that would be like the ultimate, like, like mind blowing, like, damn, like the yin and yang of the whole fucking thing. Yeah, um, th thankfully, yeah, I think that Konami is smart enough to like not listen to these people that are talking about remaking Metal Gear One and Two. These quote unquote people. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, well, these <laughs> the, these people, dude, those dumbasses, dude. <laughs> no, these people at Konami, they're not, they're not, they're not dumb enough. No, to no I'm talking about. No, I'm, I'm talking about the dumbasses that are talking about remaking yeah, Metal Gear One and right after Metal Gear Solid Delta. Like oh, that yeah. would be. I mean, the thing is, there's not. Nobody actually like, ha like you know everybody's excited about the Metal Gear Solid Three remake is because like it's it's, 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 it's a, a verbatim it's a, remake. Yeah, yeah well, it, not only is it a it's verbatim arguably the, the the most popular game in the series. Yeah, no, it's the most popular game, and then like people are emotionally attached to it. You got to do the games that people are emotionally attached to. Which are Metal Gear Solid Three and One, I and, and if there's the a game ones. that's actually worth like putting that much work into to fucking like you know kind of rework the whole game and shit, is Metal Gear Solid One. Yeah. And then and then they can go into Metal Gear Solid Two, and then just like you know, it would be a lot easier because there's so much already to work with in that yeah. game, with like yeah. as far as assets go, and, oh, yeah. uh, and goddamn, I mean, I feel like that would actually be a really good thing, just just because us, like mm. us personally, Metal Gear Solid Two is like 
right up there with Metal Gear Solid 1. Yeah. I mean, it's my favorite Metal Gear Solid I'm, game. I'm just, I'm just curious. I mean, I'm uh, kind of glad that that one would probably be the last game to be God, remade. The, you know, it's fuck, like, yeah. okay, that's actually going to be the, the, with the all game this, that's like, the most polished. It's going to be, you know, has the most features and it's going to, it's, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's going to be like a really awesome remake just because it's like going to come after Metal Gear Solid 3 and Metal Gear Solid 1. Well, one thing I'm really super curious about is that like with all this like social media, AI, all this fucking, you know, online stuff that's been going on. I wonder how, what they're going to do with like Metal Gear Solid 2. Like that's going to be like I like where like where are they even going to fucking like cuz well, I'm, well, I mean I'm assuming that game is going to take place still like in two, what 2007 or 2000 yeah, I mean, it's uh, like all the games there? are taking place in the, the the time that they were made. I mean, the thing yeah. is, those are interesting times, like yeah, the yeah, fucking yeah. turn of the millennium and shit. And like, it's kind of like the whole thing with Metal Gear Solid 2 is it kind of tapped into that whole Y2K it's thing. So, and, yeah, so you know, all the, all the hysteria surrounding that. And like, that game you know, was supposed to be like a future, a futuristic game. But now it's like a period piece. Well, yeah, I mean, the thing is, that's why, that's <laughs> why people point. love that 80s and futuristic, you know, that, that kind of that type of aesthetic. Yeah, and I think Metal Gear Solid Two has like a Y two K futurist. Yeah, aesthetic well, but also to the it. commentary, the social commentary that it had, would is like it's a is a is very is timeless because it predicted what's going on like right now when it comes to like oh, yeah. misinformation and like just like you know just like information wars and just like all this like stuff about like uh uh you know people like creating their own bubbles and and just like you know just uh, having having a very very heavy commentary on society, uh and it's just like so appropriate right now. Um, but I just kind of wonder how it's gonna like relate to what we're go- what we're gonna be going through by the time that game comes out, because we're already going through some crazy shit right now. Yeah, I mean, I feel like we're going through shit right now that's like right in line with what Metal Gear Solid Two was talking about. Yeah, yeah. And I think if people, as long as they knew that Metal Gear Solid Two was a remake, you know, of of of, of, a, of a game that came out in that time, yeah, I think they would like, you know, it wouldn't be revere as, it like, even more. Yeah, I mean. I mean, I think a lot of people want to play Metal Gear Solid 2 for that reason, you yeah. know? And they probably have already played it for that reason. It's because they want to kind of see, like, how much it actually predicted and everything like that. And then if you put that in front of a, a general audience, they're going to be like, oh, shit, this game was fucking where it was at, dude, you know? It's crazy that people aren't even talking about that. They're not well, even they are, saying, they're they're not like, saying not anything that we're saying right now. That's they are crazy. They are, but not okay. to the level that they should be. But like you know, I feel like a Metal Gear Solid Two remake would kind of reopen that that, that kind of discussion. But you know, thing is, like Metal Gear Solid One needs to re- be remade next. Metal yep. Gear Solid Two after, and then I would say that like they don't even necessarily need to. Because, you know, they're obviously going to come out with a Metal Gear Master Collection Volume 2. Yeah. And yeah. I think that Volume 2 is going to have Metal Gear Solid 4. Peace Walker. Peace Walker. Even if it just has that, it'll be enough. Like, yeah. that'll be, like, I think that if they were to redo Metal Gear Solid 4 in a Master Collection, that would be, like, awesome. Yeah, maybe, and I, maybe, maybe portable with you, like, ops. Metal Gear Solid maybe 4. Maybe Twin Snakes. Maybe they need to go back and remake it to in the sense that they need to reskin it, a remaster. Yeah, Peace just, Walker? just a simple no. Uh, uh, well, yeah, Ops? Peace Walker and MGS Four. Oh, those okay, games. Yeah, yeah, I would yeah. say like they don't need to be reworked that much. They just need to be um, remastered to where they're like have updated textures and like uh, updated polygon count. Yeah, well, MGS Four effects, is like it's almost like what can you even really do? Maybe you could even throw in a few. Metal Gear like, Four. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that well, could story, be done. Story wise, with, I mean. No, no, no. Story. No, no. I think it would be like. A straight up like Blue Point Games type remake, yeah, where you, where you, where you would just Gear improve the graphics and you would improve the lighting and then the frame rate, the, make it 4K. Maybe by the time maybe we the actually get models. to that point, it does need to be remade. But like, I honestly think that like Metal Gear Solid Four, I, I I think that they need to like remake Metal Gear One and Two before they even do that. To be honest with you, well, yeah, we repl- basically replace three and like the original. But first and foremost, yeah. they need to remake Metal Gear Solid One, Two, and Three, the the, the trilogy. The the yeah. that, that those are the games that are always on the HD collections. Those are the games that people are like. Those are the ones that kind of like more or less matter, you know, as yeah. far as the 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 legacy of the of the franchise goes. But you know, obviously, Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker and Metal Gear Solid Four were like amazing games in their own right, but like they're yeah. already pretty well refined, even by today's standards, yeah. in comparison to like Metal Gear Solid One and Two and Three. So, like, I don't know. I just feel like 
remake those. Then if after that, like, here's the thing, here's what I think they need to do. They need to remake metal gear solid one. They need to go back and make remetal remake metal gear solid two. Then they need to like go back and remake metal gear one and two, because those games are so like in demand of like, a re uh, of like you know like th th those would be the perfect game to like branch into like them doing their own thing because they yeah, have yeah. to go back yeah. and recreate so many new assets yeah so many new things that they would all they would almost be like creating a new game well yeah well, kind of it would almost be, be like a actual kind of not at the same time yeah, yeah, it, would it would be a reboot be of the franchise time. it, it would, would be a reboot of the franchise if they were to just start like you know it's like, okay we're done with the remakes Metal Gear Solid 4 is already way too polished to, for us to actually like yes. remake this game. So that's going to be part of the whole like legacy collection. But like now that we're like delving into like the beginnings of Metal Gear, we're going to remake Metal Gear 1 and 2. And those are going to be <laughs> like the, 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 the franchise going from here on out. By then, all they have to do is like fucking put, on, put a prompt and like fucking shit out. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. just like some chat. By, by that shit. time, probably. Yeah, yeah, dude. yeah no, Chat <laughs> GPT could uh, direct the game. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. No, but like, uh, uh, hopefully no, it would not, definitely but... <laughs> be a very appropriate time to like, you know, because by by then they're gonna have, be able to like, you know, uh, create a fucking decent script for like one and two, uh, and like not not to not you know just to give credit to that guy that that we were you know that we were watching, it's like it's not too bad of an idea to combine one and two. It's not, one, I, I would actually agree with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One, one, you know, one is a very simple game, uh, but 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 I mean, depending on uh, you know, I you feel could, like you you know how like Metal Gear. Solid Two had like the tanker chapter and the plant yeah. chapter. They should just do yeah. it like that, like where Metal, Gear, be, yeah. Metal Gear One is just the plant chapter or the Have tanker big boss chapter. be as yeah. you know your your boss, and yeah. it's like oh wait, but then like there's part two where you do their own thing. Maybe make it a little account. bit longer, you know, maybe yeah, twice yeah. the length of each. Yeah, section, I mean, people you know? long, are used to like longer play times yeah. these days, so like yeah. yeah, they can go in and they can they can combine those two games easily. Yeah, the tanker chapter was what like two hours, three hours. Dude, just something? literally call it Metal Gear Solid Six, you know. Oh well, yeah. Uh, I mean, and, I and then after that, they can do seven, which would be a completely new game. I mean, we're talking probably about ten years in the future from now. Have have like, a ride it ride in sun. Uh, just fucking be the new like main character. Or, you know, <laughs> I would like to see Johnny a game that takes place in between Metal Gear Solid two and four. You know, that's what Metal Gear Rising Solid was Rising to be. was supposed oh, to be. That's yeah. right. Remember before Metal Gear Rising, there was Metal Gear Solid that's Rising. Right. That was the uh Well, that's when you that's when you re there was a lot Metal of cool Gear artwork Rising. that came out of there too, with like Yoji Shinkawa's artwork that actually showed like was, what it was gonna be like, and it was pretty cool. That was such a shame. Why 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 the fuck would it was you all just... about rescuing Sunny? Why, yeah. why 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 did they ditch that idea? That doesn't make any sense to me. Like it's such an know. intriguing idea. Platinum Games got a hold of it and they just like turned it into that's, something that's completely stupid different. and gay. We're gonna just fucking yeah. I don't know, man. Yeah. Like I know a lot of people fucking love them some Metal Gear Rising because of the campiness and shit. Well, I mean, okay, but like the thing is, as a serious Metal Gear, it actually was being developed as a very serious Metal Gear Solid game yeah. initially, but they like scrapped it and. They made it take place it. like four years or so after Metal Gear Solid. Well, you 4. see elements of like the uh, what could have been like the original story because you see like the artificial brains with the eyes and like you know certain themes of like you've you know, seen uh, the artwork that Yoji Shinkawa did for the original Metal Gear Solid Rising, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he had a lot of concept art and it looked but like it was going to be. It looked too. like it was going to be way better than actually like the actual Metal Gear Rising. Yeah. And I remember whenever we saw that trailer for Metal Gear Rising, I was really disappointed. I mean, I know a lot of fans love that game, and I don't, I don't hate the game at all. I mean, I it's love just the like, game. You know, if you're like an actual fucking Metal kind of, Gear kind of Solid fan, like you know, I think, I think Metal, Metal Gear Rising is not the best game in the franchise. I think the only know? reason why we were so harsh on that game from the get go was, was because it was actually designed and developed as a serious Metal. It was called Metal Gear Solid Rising, Lightning Bolt Action. Yeah, and it was going to be a fully fledged metal gear solid title yeah and then they switched it over to just platinum games which then changed the name to metal gear yeah. rising and they they basically changed the entire game uh to be like yeah. this kind of, campy, story kind of like and... not even canon game to the series and, yeah which was not the original intention at all and if you want to hear the full the full opinion of our you know our opinion of that game we can check out our review just you know, scroll down a little bit, and you'll find our video. Yeah, you got to scroll down a little bit. For that <laughs> a shit. Little bit. Well, it was like probably about ten years. Wait, years that ago consistent. It's, be, it's, it's, my, it's my, it's my, it's my one of my favorites. Uh, my one of my favorite episodes. 
It's, yeah, I probably think, back from 2012, right? Yeah. Something like that. 2011, 12, yeah. where we we did a re- full review of Metal full Gear review. Solid not Rising, only this, not Gear only Rising. the the story, but the game, and we made two separate videos for both. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I kind of don't really remember that game too much, but I remember I mean, we played I think, it, and I was like, I, I played I and really beat it. From it too I much. love, I love the actual gameplay. I oh, love yeah, same here. It's fucking amazing. Yeah. That's why. That's why I kept playing. It's just the story. It was just the story was silly. Yeah. It was, too, too it was not Metal Gear Solid. It was Platinum Games. Metal yeah, I think, I think if you if you were to scroll down and look at our you know our review of that game, I would say that my opinion is more or less the same. You know. Yeah, the thing same is, here. I felt like I just I was I was bitter at that time because like I wanted Metal Gear Solid, Solid Rising Bolt. Lightning Bolt action from Konami. Yeah. You know, and we just got some other version of it that was not Konami. It was uh, it was uh, Platinum. Games. It wasn't even yeah. developed in the same engine. Whenever no, they, it was whenever, not developed in their engine. Whenever they first showed it, it was literally running in the Metal Gear Solid Four engine at sixty frames per second with Ooh. like better shadow. And that engine. game was not sixty frames. Per oh second. yeah, dude. I, I know it was like really Ooh. kind of like I don't know whatever. Yeah, pretty pretty. Big There's a lot off. to be said, but like you said, like we. You can go back and, and watch our review of that game, but... Uh, Actually, there was a video by Digital Foundry that we just watched uh, while we were in Vegas, uh, like, this past week, and it just kind of caught me off guard, because this channel, usually you'd think... I don't know the guy's name that runs the channel with the guy with the glasses. He's he 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 has some of the best Metal Gear videos that I've actually seen on YouTube. Like yeah. when, especially with the Metal Gear Solid Two unveiling and the whole hype surrounding Metal Gear Solid Two and the trailer and everything. So I expected this these people to have uh, a lot more in depth analysis, kind of like Gears. an educated uh, yeah, like like they were going to be like a more of a, an authority in the in this you know like something that's people that are very educated on the matter and they know exactly what they're talking about. But um, I don't know. I was just kind of disappointed by their like the, the the fact that they didn't know anything about like the fact that the game um, even had uh, like a legacy mode. They didn't even know about the legacy mode at all. They didn't know about the yellow filter. They didn't know that the, they were. They kept saying that the game was like a slavish remake of the original game. It's like, oh, it's, fucking it's, ridiculous. It's, yeah, no. It's so like oh, is, it's, it's isn't gonna, this guy like usually like very technical? Yes, with, like, the, you he know, is like extremely technical and he knows exactly like all about Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3. He's a huge fan of Metal Gear and he just kind of dropped the ball. Like, I mean, I'm kind of surprised that he just didn't know anything about this remake and uh, maybe it's because he's just more of a Kojima fan than a Konami fan or something and he hasn't really kept up with Konami, you know, that, and, uh, and so, so he's kind of he's kind of behind on that front, you know, and like, um, yeah, he, they, they they kept saying that he's this one game, of those people. Yeah, they, they kept they kept so saying that, that this game. So clouded by his fandom that he can't like you know be objective. No, I think he got clouded by like his hate for Konami. Yeah, that he didn't even just like keep up with the latest shit that's going on over there with Metal Gear and Konami. Yeah, and then and the fact that they've been doing right uh, a good decision after good decision. You know, he's just like what? Oh, what? Okay, all right. You know, he just didn't now they, know the now they have to talk about it, and they just but this guy specifically came into the conversation like ill prepared yeah i know the thing time. is it was kind of weird because the other people were the ones that were telling him like no dude there's a legacy mode in this thing where they have like the original fucking you know telling overhead the cameras guy that's like the correct yeah, it was weird shit. because he's like oh yeah man i remember saying like it wasn't subsistence but it was like metal gear solid uh you know three snake eater that came out a year before the original version that had like a lot of cinematic camera angles that were placed, you know, and like yeah. it, it, it made the graphics work really well with the, you know, with, with the camera angles and uh, man, you know, that, that mode was fucking awesome. And then there was like, actually that mode is in the game. Like they had this fucking video where they showed. Uh, that's the like a really collection. big fuck up, dude. Yeah, I know. Yeah, no, <laughs> especially for a channel as big as that, yeah. like pretty much millions of followers at this point. Yeah. Like, bro, like you're supposed to be the authority on metal gear for like a lot of people yeah and you like didn't even know about this but like you know whatever dude it's the guy needs to freaking like they, yeah, he's, 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 I, he's, I, just feel, yeah. I just get the feeling that he's, he's one of these people that yeah. is just like pro all in for kojima yeah he's all in i mean digital yeah, he, foundry he, yeah. in general is like very fucking yeah, woke dude, they general. had a very in-depth fucking analysis on death stranding but they're, actually like, not, their, their, their analysis on this metal gear trailer was pretty fucking half ass i'm not really that surprised because yeah. you know their channel in general has been become very woke and like not, yeah yeah like they've become very oh yeah i mean they're like, literally I mean, the center they're, of they're, their coverage of 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 uh stellar, stellar blade, blade yeah and talking about how dude the thing know, is people reference them the most out of wait, anybody did, that actually didn't they like cover then they- so basically, there's a guy on on uh, Digital Foundry. Uh-huh. He's kind of the skinnier guy with scar, and he's like always like he's he's referenced so many times on the internet from people that are just like you know, I guess non woke gamers and stuff. And they always right. reference this guy and about his comments on Stellar Blade. And he was he okay. was the guy that was saying like, oh yeah, you know. 
this is a character of a bygone era, you know, very hyper proportioned character that nobody wants to play as anymore. You know, I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm looking forward more nobody to like us uh, uh, for spoken, it's for, for spoken. Yeah, for He's like, yeah, you know, it's like that. That's more of a uh, that, that looks more like a game for a modern audience, and that's you know, they, think- they literally fucking quote this guy. They, they you you'll see that clip played back on so many fucking videos oh my God. about like how fucking oh look at these fucking woke ass idiots and shit. You know, well they are. Yeah, no. The thing and, is, and I, I feel like the fact that like they cover kojima's fucking like death stranding game like to no end but then whenever it comes to konami's fucking like you know reimagining of metal gear Solid 3 which is fucking way better than what like the kojima's doing with death stranding yeah dude. like they don't even they don't even know shit about it they uh, literally uh, just uh, are I feel like if prepared you, if you go to that channel you like you should expect to be like you know uh kind of showered with a lot of like technical prowess and like oh yeah their videos are very technically accurate to like what was going on yeah they know but, then, but, the, but they're stuff. you know they, you might as well amount them to some fifi boys dude. Oh, yeah, yeah exactly like they're their just, opinions they're their yeah. opinions it's, on, it's, it's on like especially a, the guy especially the guy that was talking about stellar blade well, he's dude, like the biggest yeah. sword yeah, boy it, the thing is, is it like sounds like it sounds like like that channel is fucking breaking character basically <laughs> like yeah. uh well, i mean it's I supposed to be like a lot of people that kind of subscribe to that mindset probably do suffer from a lot of like you know uh, just like uh, confusion about where what what they should even think about certain things yeah. because I mean obviously they're like supporting a freaking game like Metal Gear or like you know where there's a lot of like testosterone and masculinity involved masculinity involved with it but they just like have this approach where they're just so freaking like just femboys about it you yeah. know and they don't have any approach from a masculine standpoint about anything. I mean, it's all just like, they just talk about the technique. Anytime they actually do get the opportunity to talk about anything like that, it's always like they, they choose to take the, the, the forespoken route. Yeah, no, I mean, the, 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 you know, whenever you have a channel like that, that's just like, it's not really a well-rounded channel. It's like just, just strictly about mainly technical, the technicalities of video games, yeah. which I, I can get down with, but like, man, you gotta you like really that, kind that, of like have fucking, a like, freaking, other end of the spectrum where yeah, it's like, you gotta be a fucking, yeah. like, you, you gotta have some masculinity or shit. You know, you gotta have an opinion about shit and like, yeah, you gotta fight against like a lot of the, the shit that's going on, especially with a lot of these uh, consultancy firms and like, you know them kind of blackmailing a lot of these game developers with you know well, being canceled and shit there, like that. Is there is there any yeah. pushback uh, against this guy within that channel, or no, is it mostly no, the comment? No, okay. it's not. It's only not about, within the it's, channel. It's, it's, no, not within the channel. It's all, no. with, it's all from outside. Okay. Yeah. The but thing but is, there's not a lot of clap back to the. I mean, there is a lot of clap back to these guys, especially with the Stellar Blade commentary that they had. But you know. I mean, we're it's, even pushing it further and just kind of just like calling out on like, you know, like really guys, you, you're you going to fucking film a Metal Gear Solid video talking about the latest and greatest, uh, but just because like they don't have their freaking, they don't have their, their, their favorite director, Hideo Kojima involved with it. They're just, they're, they ain't even going to watch the trailer or give yeah. you, get informed yeah, about uh, the video. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they dude, speak uh, on obviously it? that guy didn't even watch the, uh, the video with David Hayter. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, no. it's definitely yeah. a very like, you know, egregious like lapse of like you know uh of like performance because of like if you're if you're if you're a technical guy you're gonna fucking you know if, if you're gonna be so like technical about like the the past like videos of like about metal gear but then like you're just gonna like look at like the something that's like very blatant very easy to understand uh you know trailer but then you're not even gonna get you're gonna basically just gonna comment on the game without obviously like not watching the trailer obviously not watching it it's like no, they're, yeah. they're, they're basically these types of guys that are just like you know they, they, they are like so like ingrained with kojima they're involved they, they, they got sucked into the they got sucked into the black disc and red disc you know what i'm saying mm. they, they, they're the guys that just like took the propaganda as is and they think that konami had no fucking part in like actually making those games badass too and they like they they don't think that they can just hire another director and like make the series fucking awesome again. I mean, th- these guys are just like all about the auteur director and, and you know just following Kojima down the rabbit yeah, hole yeah, with this freaking the- decline of his career. And they're gonna they're gonna see Kojima to the end, but they will not even acknowledge like the prowess that Konami. Uh, yeah, brought the, to the, the thing gear. is, I felt like they're kind of like rebuilding really at this point. Yeah, Konami is about. like, you know, they're hungry. Obviously, they're hungry. They're making all these right decisions. They yeah. have to be hungry. Yeah. So I, I, I want to see a fucking company kind of rise from the ashes, and I want to see them fucking like 
really just making a lot of right decisions, you yeah. know? And like, that seems like what the work Konami is at right now is like, okay, we, we're coming back and we're going to come back in a big way. And, uh, you know, I don't see Kojima really coming back in a big way. I mean, yeah, he has death Stranding too. Looks okay. But like, you know, it's just like, I'm not really that like, what, what is not, it? Nothing uh, ID really. or OD or what OD. Was, yeah. OD is yeah. like literally the worst fucking trailer. I mean, I remember like it's everybody, fucking... everybody that I showed that trailer to was like, what the fuck? This looks stupid. You know, it's like literally and then, and all then, that and guy and gives a shit about is the directors that he's working with and the actors and then that's it you know it's like that's that's he thinks that's yeah. enough to have well, a, he definitely a, have to be part case. of the fandom like already to like appreciate that trailer yeah i mean whenever he went out on the stage and talked about od he literally brought jordan peele out with him gave him a big entrance like oh yeah man this is the guy man oh yeah look at his big entrance look how much money we put into this I'm like okay dude yeah but what the fuck like you're literally not giving us any context about as to what this game even is why should we be excited like yeah sure it's a kojima and jordan peele game what the fuck is he like who cares with all like, these other uh yeah it's like uh, dude i don't give a shit marvel, show me it's like he said that's it was the a marvel, type of shit that you would do that's the type of shit you would do if you don't have a good game under your belt kojima ha or konami has a good game under their belt they're literally just showing off like all their new fucking shit that they've been uh, developing with Metal Gear Solid Three, all the new uh, camera angles, the new CQC animations. I remember this guy didn't even know that they had updated the animations in the game. Yeah, no, that's another thing that I wanted that's to bring up insane. is that like yeah. he, he, they kept bringing up like, oh yeah, this is like a slavish remake to the original. It's kind of like a Blue Point game remake where they like, just take what do you the mean original by slave? Game. It's like it's like, yeah. like, 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 it's like, like basically like too verbatim to the original. Yeah, so oh, basically okay. like they said they they specifically said it's a slavish remake of the original game meaning that like it's like a blue point game remake where it's just the exact same game the exact same controls the exact same animations but just the graphics are updated and that's it and there was like dude what the fuck and then the thing is they kept getting like oh wait what, hold on a minute what's this you know oh yeah it looks like there's a legacy mode that actually has the original camera angles uh, and then there's a new mode that actually has new animations you like know they were has finding new, out about yeah. it in real time probably yeah from like, like, probably the from blunder. their comment section the where the, blunder, that were like, calling yeah. them idiots yeah yeah exactly it's probably what it was i wouldn't doubt that at all it's like uh yeah yeah guys, no, the thing is like you know the thing is i actually like digital foundry's channel overall uh i feel like you know, if anything, I don't think they're going to listen to this at all. But, like, you know, fucking stop with the freaking hate towards Konami. Uh, stop with the, the freaking pro, like, you know. Woke shit. Stupid woke shit. And just get back to fucking track with your freaking audience. Yeah, we'll, said, we'll leave it at that. Yeah. I think uh, this about wraps up this episode of Next Gen Cast, though. So, you know, we talked about a lot today. Freaking... I think we got out a lot. There's probably a lot of shit that we missed that we wanted to talk about, but yeah. you know, there's always going to be future podcasts. So make sure you stick, stick with us and just, uh, tune into the next episode. Yeah. I mean, no, now that the metal gear franchise is back, you know, God, you're going to be seeing us like a even, lot more. Even, even yeah. whenever we do other episodes, we talk a lot about like, Metal Gear, we just inject Metal Gear in there. You know, whenever we talk about open world gaming and yeah. how it kind of fell flat with Metal Gear Solid, we always just inject Metal Gear, our Metal Gear fandom into everything. But now that the Metal Gear franchise is back, shit, we're gonna yeah, be we, we, we're gonna have some fucking in-depth analysis on a yeah, lot of we're, shit. We're gonna we're we're back. We're definitely yeah. back. Oh, we're back. the thing is, is that it. uh I was talking to Brian about this earlier, but we're gonna be um we're gonna be rebranding the channel. Uh, to Ooh. be more Metal Gear centric instead of uh, the usual kind of um, Mortal Kombat one kind of aesthetic. Okay, we're going to be going with a Metal Gear aesthetic with this channel now. So because we just end up talking about Metal Gear so much, there's almost no reason we why never we talk about Mortal Kombat. I know it's it's, it's, it's kind weird, of a cool aesthetic that we like, but yeah, yeah it's not really. So is it? And that's on next gen cats. It's Metal Gen cast. Metal Metal Gen cast, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, Caesar. <laughs> All right, food cast. Well, uh, it was great talking today. Let's uh, go ahead and, yeah. and uh, check out. But yeah, come join us again next time. Absolutely. See you later. All right. Later.